So obviously Andrew Tate is back in the news and he is still being investigated. This is part one of Piers Morgan interview with him recently. We're not watching the whole thing. We're actually skipping 31 minutes into the interview to watch a specific segment where she talks about the lover boy method. And I just really want people, especially Andrew Tate fans who probably won't pay any attention to this and that's fine, to recognize how slimy and snake-like this human being is. He is full of contradictions. He is obviously scamming you and he's obviously using you like the sugar daddy he is. He's obviously very unethical and immoral and he will say whatever it takes to get out of jail. The irony, of course, and the thing that I enjoy the most is he's obviously curated this little bubble for himself, which is beautiful, okay? But now the bubble that he's made for himself is coming to bite him in the butt. And that's what's kind of beautiful. Remember that this man rose to fame and um, with salacious TikToks and being reposted and saying really obnoxious things, allegedly playing a character but not playing a character, being sarcastic but being honest. He's a person who's grifted and grifted and grifted. He's a person who has made money scamming women and scamming men. He's had his Hustlers University to his like, you know, little programs he's made for people to watch and learn from him. He's talked about the lover boy method. And remember, the lover boy method means something. And so watch Andrew Tate twist words, twist reality, and try to convince people that the matrix is, matrix is out to get him. At some point, Andrew Tate is going to become Kanye West. Only one has bipolar and one is just a scammer who's getting lost in the bubble he curated for himself. The, the literal irony of it is so beautiful. I can't wait to watch it with you. So let's get into it. I do not regret it because I live true to God. I'm not gonna sit here as a coward and not tell the truth to people for as long as I live until they put a bullet. Please note that he says, I live true to God, which is, it, which is to appeal. So this whole interview is just him appealing to the conservative base. He says God instead of Allah, right? So just pay attention to that because he claims to be Muslim, which is like fine. But obviously if I was a Muslim, I would not want him representing my religion because he's obviously not a real Muslim and like, hello. So pay attention that he specifically makes sure that he doesn't pronounce himself to Allah. He says God, which though means similar or same things, doesn't say the same thing when you're doing propaganda. It doesn't actually mean the same thing when you're doing um, a tour of your reputation. When you're going from interview to interview, he's trying to appeal to the Christians, right? So he's already rejecting Allah because he knows it will turn people away from him because the Christians don't like the Muslims. So just pay attention to that. In my head. Let me ask you about the lover boy method. So the suggestion is that you and your brother and others, uh, but you, let's talk about you, that you deploy the lover boy method where you would make women fall in love with you. You would then persuade them to do uh, webcam, TikTok. webcam stuff, right? TikTok. Okay, but wait, let's call it webcam stuff, right? No, let's not call it that. The indictment is about TikTok. Okay, what would you make the women do? Or what would they do with you? I don't make anybody do anything. Okay. In fact, let's talk about the lover boy method. So it's yeah. very interesting. Let's imagine the Matrix is pissed off with a said individual who's telling too much truth and everybody is listening to him and they decide they're gonna- The Matrix telling too much truth, everyone's upset with him, okay? Attack him with sexual assault claims. They say, ah, he's making women do, well, we found conversations where he gave advice on how to go viral on TikTok. Mm. He's making women do TikTok, but he isn't being horrible to them. He's not hitting them. He's not being mean to them. So what can we do? Let's use the lover boy method. If I was abusive and mean, they wouldn't say lover boy method. Do you know what lover boy method means? Mm. Being nice. He was so here he is recontextualizing what words mean. The lover boy method does not mean being nice. But don't you love how he's twisting it for the audience to now adapt and change the word to actually move his agenda forward? Do you like the video is quiet? Okay, I'll turn it up. I'll turn it up. I'll turn it up. Okay, so like pay attention to that, right? He says like, do you know what the lover boy method is? It's being nice. He's recontextualizing this word. He's changing the definition of this word to make himself look better. And watch his fans are going to eat this up and his fans are going to start saying, um, the lover boy method is actually like him being nice to women. That's what they're going to do. In the same way people are recontextualizing other words. And that's why we have to be very careful. I kind of, I stand Papa gut on this. We really have to really identify what the word grooming means because we keep using it for everybody, but grooming means intentional maliciousness, which Andrew Tate obviously is exhibiting. But the reason he's going to win in terms of his fans or in the public eye is he's going to say, well, if this person's a groomer, then everyone's a groomer, which could be true. If you keep saying like everyone is a groomer, then no one is a groomer. And so that's kind of the issue we're going to have with language. He's going to twist lover boy in a new way and watch the internet's gonna like own it. 
and he's going to he's going to start he's going to start using it. Ah, Camp Camp says Pearl already did that too. See? Beautiful. It was nice and polite and kind and they really liked Okay, the audio was turned up all the way on my end for both, so Hopefully you guys can hear it. Him as a person, and he told them how to do TikTok. But that's not what the lover boy. He's a lover boy. That's, that's not, Of course it is. Andrew, that's not what the lover boy method is. Absolutely. This has seven million views in three days. Lover boy. And the Pierce Mogren is, is really pushing back on him, which is good. Perpetrators woo victims with the prospect of a loving relationship until they can be forced into abusive situations or a form of slavery. This is garbage. That's actually what it means. The lover boy method is being nice to people so that you work together, effectively, what they're trying to say here. I was nice to girls who asked me for TikTok advice, and they sang us the lover boy method. I didn't beat them into doing TikTok. I didn't force them. I didn't threaten them. In fact, I was like, yeah, you're very pretty. You can be pretty famous. Was there you any well. element of coercion? How can there be an ele- What does that even mean? Let's be professionals here. What Let's be professionals here. So now he's telling Piers Morgan, if you don't engage with me how I like, you're not the professional. He's now stating that he's the professional and he knows how to act. And so he's a, you know what I'm saying? It's like very basic manipulation tactics. But this is what I mean to say that men will do to people, especially like brain dead women. And they are because you have to be brain dead to fall for Andrew Tate, whether you're a woman or a man. And that's what I'm saying. There are women today who will still want to pursue Andrew Tate. And that's fine. If you share his ethics or morals or if you're just too brain dead to fall for it, I love that for you. But that's the thing. He built a bubble in which he said he uses the lover boy method in which he pay, he for, he charged men prices to learn from his pimp ac academy, right? He literally called himself these things like a pimp and it appealed to men. But once it went public, well, now that was just a meme. That was just a joke. That was just a word, right? What, does that even what do you mean? think coercion means? I was coerced into this interview. See how he changes words? I was coerced into this interview. That's not what coercion means. Coercion means something. So if you're Andrew Tate and you're denying criminality, you don't take those words and twist them. But that's what he's doing. He's taking those words and saying, that's not what they mean anymore. Now they mean this. And people are going to fall for it. That's why I said, if you are dating somebody who's an Andrew Tate fan, you either have the conversation with them and show them these interviews. And if they're still Andrew Tate fans, you need to dump them. You don't have to do anything. You can date Andrew Tate fans. You can be an Andrew Tate fan. You can do whatever you want. But if you're, again, somebody who has different values than Andrew Tate, who I believe is a sex trafficker, it's a belief, right? <sighs> you know? You came along to me and said- You weren't coerced into this interview. Yes, I was. Or don't tell me, the bullying Pierce. MSM said, Andrew, you've got to do an interview. No. You and used... I'm going to fly all no. the way to Romania no. to do it. You, you didn't do, do that. Favor. You used the lover boy method. You said, sir- The lover boy method. And Andrew Tate is a groomer for the record. He had a 15 year old that he had sex with and groomed to be his second in charge. And now she's like 21 and or 22. I don't know how she is now, but he's been with her since he was a grown man and she was 15. And I think if you're a grown man dating a 15 year old, you have something wrong with you or slash you are so in your like basic biology that you're not even introspective enough to consider the damage you're doing to this younger person. Matthew. Yep. Andrew, this is going to be a very interesting interview. We had a good one last time. You're a nice guy. We have some interesting conversations. I didn't say you were a nice I'm going to guy. come along. Wait we're a minute, gonna, wait a We're going to make some money from hey, this interview. Wait a minute. Money will be made for both minute. sides. Wait a you minute. You me. Why is he, see how he's going crazy? He's trying to appeal to that literally, like that, he's just so unhinged in this interview. Wait a minute. stole the profit. Wait, just to be clear, I've had no conversation with you. Why does he look like an AI? Like he doesn't even look like a person. He's also very, very thin. Thin in this, which is interesting. About this interview. And the conversations I've had with your intermediary were very professional. And I said, I would like to do an interview. Were with you me. nice? Of course, I'm always nice. Lover boy. You can't believe you used. Wow. Were you nice? Lover boy. Like he's so, this is so fascinating to me when I see people do this. And this is a manipulation tactic, right? This is a manipulation tactic. This is why I say, like, watch how people treat you or get defensive or twist words. Look at people who can, like, go down to the ground of, like, what they're doing. Like, he's not, he's not, he doesn't have humility. He doesn't have introspection. He's not thinking about the word coercion. He's not thinking about the word lover boy. He's not really thinking. He's just, um, he's just working on image. He's just twisting image. He's just doing marketing right now. Nice. Like, this is so bad faith to lover boy me because this is a profitable enterprise and I was 
coerced here. I make no pretense that I'm into, I've come all the way from London to Romania to Correct. interview you because, yes, I want to do it on my show and Correct. that will clearly benefit me and my show. Am I a full grown consenting but, adult who decided the, to do the this? Idea, show? Yeah, but you're not being coerced into doing this. Am I this? a full grown consenting adult who decided to do this? He acts like coercion doesn't also have the elements of manipulation and also lying. Like, that's the problem is that. Piers Morgan never lied to him about the intention of the interview, but Andrew Tate, according to his victims, manipulated and lied to them about the intentionality he had in terms of them coming to live with him, which is the lover boy method, right? He's very Trumpian, very Trump, so Trump. It's just so Trump's playbook. High, very high on the narcissism scale. Very, like Andrew Tate built this bubble around his reputation and now it's coming back to bite him in the butt, right? Saying I moved to Romania because they're lax on criminals, doing all these things. And now it's going to bite him in the butt. So he's got to do the Trump thing where he just acts like wild and pretends it's everybody else. But he's probably going to end up in jail like Trump is, maybe. Hopefully you would think so, right? Hopefully you would think so. This show. Yes. Okay. So I wasn't coerced, correct? But what's that got to do with what I've asked you? Because you were nice to me and you're saying that. I wasn't that's nice like, to you. I didn't even talk to you. Being nice is the lover boy method and that and adults see, have See, no being nice is the lover boy method. That's not what it is. But I like the way he's twisting it to make it sound that way. Dude, I wasn't, responsibility I wasn't nice, nice to someone. Uh, they become your slave. I wasn't nice to you. Did. Okay. Good point, B West. It's worst. He's not unhinged. He's deliberately framing clips for his TikTok minions. Very true. I didn't call you a nice guy. I feel lover boy. Hmm? I feel lover boy. Dude. I'm sorry. Well, I'm See, so I feel lover boy. Like he's obviously being facetious. He's being outrageous. He's trying to do it for the clicks, but also he's trying to downplay the word lover boy. He's trying to downplay these words that should mean something or do mean something to the rest of the world. So again, he made a bubble where he's macho, where women love him, men worship him, blah, blah, blah. And now it's coming back to bite him in the butt. And so now he's got to like, he's doing like, um, He's doing like almost like uh, he's panicking almost, right? It feels like a panic. I th I feel like he's panicking. Sorry. It's fine. It's, it, you had a, a website, Hustlers University, Correct. offering courses. To so true, Halians. What's sad is that so many men will think this is big brain shit. They will literally be like, I'm in on it. I know what Tate's doing. I'm in on it. Okay. That's why I said, you know, funny enough about Justin Waller is Justin Waller said like he doesn't agree with Andrew Tate on a lot of things and now that I'm seeing the difference between the two I think even though I disagree with Justin Waller and his decision making in relation to gender norms and gender expectation I think he's better well-intentioned than Andrew Tate I think Justin Waller might be a good well-intentioned person versus Andrew Tate's obviously not well-intentioned right TMM is here hello I can just imagine his lawyer watching this interview and cringing literally literally right like I'm so interested to see what happens but hear me out I'm willing I'm open to the nuance obviously like I can look at Justin Waller and say okay there's something about you that is actually much more well-intentioned and I don't think you know as far as I know Justin Waller isn't involved in the sex trafficking stuff but Andrew Tate I don't think there's anything in him that's well-intentioned I think the way he talks about women, the way his he was brought up, the way he talks about even like his mom sometimes, I'm like, obviously you're not well-intentioned, right? And so I think that's something that I would personally specify as like, that's where the nuance is. I don't say everyone in the red pill is the same, everyone in the menosphere is the same. I'm not trying to lump them all together. I'm trying to say specifically Andrew Tate is obviously a bad person with bad intentions. Teaching husbands and boyfriends how to get their partners Absolutely into webcam. Absolutely false. The Hustlers University, which you can go to now, actually, we've changed the domain, it's university.com, mm -hmm. is a school which teaches modern wealth creation methods. We teach people how to make websites, we teach people e-com. Why did you call it, why did you call it a PhD, pimping hose degree? No, you're talking about an old video which was made satirical. Well, why did you call it that? Oh, that was satire. Of course it was. Nine years ago, the internet was a very different place. And if you're mm -hmm. going to sit here and say, oh, nine years ago, you said stupid things on the internet, it's not... Okay, so this argument is very frustrating to me because there is a real argument to be made about forgiveness and cultural changes. So obviously, if you were on the internet a billion years ago, there were definitely things that I posted that I would never post now. And I know the change and I can speak about them and tell you why I've changed my mind on them. Andrew Tate can't and he did them recently as much as he says it was a long time ago there are interviews of him recently with the same language and same vibe he's doing it right now by claiming to be coerced and lover boyed in this interview he is so bad faith right 
That even right now, he's doing the same thing he claims was nine years ago. He is downplaying the severity of real words that mean real things. He's not engaging in reality. He's engaging in like a fantasy and using this very relatable thing we have all faced growing up as millennials on the internet, which is to be forgiven for things that we cringely posted in the past. And look, I am a radical acceptance person. I think humans are going to human. I think all of us live in different bubbles and have different relationships to words and memes and jokes. And I'm not someone who's very easily offended. And so it's easy for me to be like, yeah, dude, times change. Like people say things, whatever. Like the F slur was very common in our vocabulary way back in the day. I'm not going to hold it against somebody who used it. I don't even know if I'd hold it up against somebody who used it now, depending on the context. Like I'm very into words are just like the construct of a bubble. Like if gender is a construct, which I think it is, of course, words are a construct. So for me, I'm like all about accepting that people can use words and mean them harmlessly. But when they mean them with cruel and malicious intention, I think it is more clear to some of us than others. And for me, Andrew Tate is downplaying lover boy and coercion. Now, if he said, hey, this is really serious. Coercion and lover boy is a very serious and very real thing. And I do not want to be associated with this terminology. And I really need you to consider that I am a man. I'm a father. I have a partner. I have responsibilities. And you putting this on my reputation is so deplorable, so disgusting to me. But he's not doing that. He's memeing, he's twisting, he's not engaging, he's acting in bad faith, which tells me he's defensive, which tells me he's losing control, which tells me that he is a little afraid he's going to be caught by the matrix, which you built this bubble. You bragged about moving to Romania. You bragged about coercing women. You bragged about scamming customers. I'm not sure what he thought would happen, except high level narcissism, not NPD, but high level narcissism can lead you to thinking you are never going to be held responsible for your actions. Much like Trump. Trump literally thought no one's ever going to hold me responsible for this. And well, you know, and it is what it is. And by the way, the same people that are still voting for Trump are going to back Andrew Tate. And that's why we all live in bubbles and we're all having different relationships with reality. And I can't even fault people for falling for Trump and Andrew Tate because I just look at them like, yeah, I get it. Like you really think you're in on it because you don't want to admit you were tricked. That's why I say introspection is hard. It is hard to admit like, oh shit, not only did I get it wrong, but I was dumb enough to fall for something that's so obvious to me now. That's how painful it feels popping a bubble where you're like, this is so obvious to me now. But then I want you to do that like a thousand times. I still pop bubbles now and I'm like, holy shit, that's so obvious. But like, it's not obvious when you're not aware of it until you pop the bubble. And then you're like, oh, damn it. Okay, one more thing to like understand that seemed obvious but wasn't, right? It's not a gotcha moment because every single person has. So have you. No, but you'd be very so have you because you advocated for the vaccine, you, sir. So uh, yeah, you absolutely. Said, See, he said you've said dumb things on the internet too because you've advocated for the vaccine. Stupid really? things on the internet. Yeah. Life, that's how things go. It's satirical. I also said I'm an astronaut. Do you believe I've been to the moon? Because I haven't, believe mm. it or not. Hustle University teaches children how to make websites and it teaches and it's Is there any one reason I'm asking you? Advice. Only reason I'm asking you, you've repeatedly said in interviews since you were arrested that you have never categorized yourself as a pimp. You don't think you're a pimp, right? Well, what about all the rappers? Did you ask Ice Cube if he's a pimp and a- Okay, okay. A murderer and a drug dealer? I'm not Jay Z sold crack. I'm not, interviewing, you're talking I'm not interviewing them. I'm asking- What about all the other black people? <laughs> He's talking about musicians and artists who, yes, many of them have a past and they talk about it. Yeah. But also, what's the biggest secret in rap culture? Half of them aren't even gangsters. They just pretend they are for clicks and views. Like literally one of the most infamous like whispers around rap communities is that like nobody's actually as tough. They just do that to sell like music to people that only some of them were ever actually gangsters. And most of them actually have stories from their past. So for him to bring up like Jay-Z and Ice Cube, first of all, I'm pretty sure Ice Cube did have a past and like, it doesn't matter. It matters. It's not the same, obviously, because they're not they're having a different relationship with those things now. They're telling stories. It's like Eminem being held accountable for his art. Yes, in some ways, maybe, but it's just music. He never did those things in real life. Andrew Tate did these things, according to his eight or so victims. So again, it's kind of interesting, right? But they're... they're I like when he, he deflects. He points to somebody else. It's like, well, what about them? So wait, are we admitting that they did do those things or they didn't? Because a what is the point, right? Like, what's, what is this conversation we're having about this? Like, what is his point to derail? 
You know what I mean? It's interesting. Ice Cube does family friendly movies now. Exactly. Which we love. He's such a dad. We love it. Can you whether you have at any stage in the last 15 years been a pimp? Of course I've not been a pimp. I've said I'm a pimp. I've said I'm an astronaut. I've said I'm a cowboy. I've said I'm the strongest man in the world. I've said I'm James Bond. Bro so you're not the strongest man in the world. You're nothing. I'm just kidding. Throw me in jail. Are you just- Put me in jail. Okay. I deserve it. Nine years ago, I made a joke on the internet. So here's my question. See, see how he's like, he's so, wait, what is this? Is this like his character? Is this him actually making an argument? What is the game he's playing? Like, it's just, you're watching this character and even Piers Morgan is like watching him like, like, what, what are we supposed to be doing with this, right? So then I always feel like the men who bought Andrew Tate's stuff should be able to admit they got scammed by him, but they can't. They can't admit that he himself sold them a narrative of how to mimic his work in his programs, but they don't want to admit that he was able to, like, trick them. And then how funny would that be if his male victims actually came out and said, like, yeah, I fell for him. I fell for it, but they can't because a lot of them have the same morals and they will use women to take advantage of and use them. Look, what's the biggest controversy in porn companies right now is that the men are taking advantage of the women, that it's riddled with misogyny. A lot of the porn industry is riddled with misogyny. And as much as those women want to work in a safe environment, a lot of them aren't working in safe environments, which is why things like OF have been really helpful because at least you're working for yourself. And yes, there are women like Tate Second and in charge who have been groomed and coerced into believing in this like misogyny. And so they think it's safe and like sane to do this to other women, right? So again, my concern is that we are not paying attention to the fact that even if you say you're doing it for women's liberation, you might be doing it through the guise of misogyny, which makes the conservatives then say, see, porn is misogynistic. You shouldn't do it. But it's like, no, porn curated through the patriarchy and through misogyny is bad for women. Porn created for and by women or for and by men who are ethical and moral is good. So again, it's like, you need to separate these things, but it's very difficult for people to do that, right? Are you are you a fantasist? I'm not a fantasist. Uh, do you have a persona that's just not you? Of course not. I am me. Well, if you are you, why would you repeatedly call yourself a pimp and then now say you've never been a pimp? Are you going to sit here and say that because I've once said, oh... I'm curious whether if you, you, you're trying to say to me you didn't mean any of the things you said. Okay, abusers were usually abused. Tate was probably molested as a child. Okay, first of all, that's a huge assumption. Second of all, it's not that abusers were abused. It's that humans continue cycles of abuse. So his dad left them to pursue a chess career and to ditch their mother. And they weren't raised with a father. They were raised in poverty in the UK. Then they learned criminal activity to make some money and join kickboxing. And he did accomplish that in kickboxing, which is true, right? So I don't want, I, I'm fine with the explanation that like, yes, people from toxic backgrounds do tend to repeat cycles. And that's not an excuse, but it is an explanation for his bad behavior. But the dilemma is like now with his opportunities, education, and is allegedly, this is what I say, pay attention to the people that say they're smart and introspective. If you're so smart and introspective, why do you keep doing this? If you're so smart, if you're so genius, if you're smarter than everyone else, why do you keep fucking up? And that's the question I always wanna ask people. But of course, most people are actually distracted by money most people are actually convinced that if you have money, you must know something no one else has because people feel like they never have access to money, which is interesting. So we're dealing with a psychology that even the most well-intentioned people will fall for. Oh, like my person is only successful if they make a lot of money is actually quite common in most places, even in feminist or progressive bubbles. Even though they don't like the idea of people making money, it does say to them, enough people have given you money to make you rich, you must be saying something good. So Andrew Tate has the benefit of money that overshadows everything else because people think, well, he must have done something right because I can't have access to this. But most people who don't make money can have access to pimping, can have access to abuse, can have access to a lot of things we all have access to. The thing that sets him apart, the reason people think he's like a big deal is his accomplishments with money. It wasn't even that he did kickboxing. That was a specific bubble. Only the people in the kickboxing MMA world or in sports cared about that. Everyone else only cared about Andrew Tate when he was like, what color is your Bugatti? When he was rich and he had 15 cars and he's flashing all these women. It's very interesting. So I'm asking myself, well, why should I believe anything you say now? In other words, is what you say actually what you mean? 
Is Andrew Tate... And that was the problem Sneeko kept running into. Who is the real Sneeko and who is the character? And that's the dilemma, is there is a real part of Tate that exists, but we don't have access to him and he won't show it. And then there's a real part of Sneeko that exists, but he won't show it, so we don't have access to it. But ultimately, they are going to be held responsible for the version of them that breaks the law, whether it's a character or not. The version of them that breaks 2S, whether it's a character or not. It doesn't matter if it's a character, if you're breaking the fucking law. It doesn't matter if it's a character, if you're breaking TOS. It doesn't matter. You can't say, I was playing a character and the character broke TOS. I was playing a character and the character sex trafficked women. <laughs> Sir, this, this, isn't, this isn't pretend land. You are impacting real people's lives. And a good community is going to hold you accountable. Real? Or do you have a complete persona that you fuel for money that has nothing to do with the real you? I don't know. You tell me. I exaggerated on the internet nine years ago for comedic effect. I'd walk into a nightclub and there'd be girls at my table like every other man who walks into a nightclub and I'd say, pimp it. Oh no, put me in jail. 93 days was not enough with the cockroaches. I should go back. This is a matrix attack, Pierce. Every single person, every single man out there has done things worse than I've done. In fact, I will argue if you- And if those men have, they should be held accountable. Just because there's somebody who's done worse than you doesn't mean you've done, you haven't done bad. But 99.9% But by the way, that is the justification so many men on, use on the internet. Think of the progressive fuck boys. Think of the progressive fuck boys. Well, I'm not as bad as these other guys. So it, it's okay if I serial cheat. It's okay if I line manipulate. It's okay if I do this X, Y, and Z. If you're a fuck boy, you're still a fuck boy, which means you're using, um, you're using manipulation to convince the girls or boys you're pursuing or men you're pursuing to think of you differently than you are. You're presenting yourself as a facade. And again, that's the problem. The problem is that you're lying to people in order to get your way and you're causing a you're leaving a line of destructive of destruction. You're like hurting people, confusing people and then blaming them for being confused just like Andrew Tate is. Why is the world upset with me? Why are they confused? It was obviously a character. If it's a character, you owe men a refund for all the money they gave you for this character that they thought was real selling them a product. But no, his fans are going to be like, no, 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 we knew. We were in on it. We knew. We knew the troll. We knew it was a character. So you knew it was a character? What's going on? Like, they don't, you know what I'm saying? Set of men through the level of scrutiny I've been through by, by multiple federal agencies. You will find a lot. He has the same energy as it's just a prank, bro. Based Becca. A lot worse than him saying he was a pimp on the internet nine years ago. You will find actual genuine crime. And I've done nothing. I live true to God. This is all garbage and it's not real. Like I said, who, which God? I wish, uh, which God? Who God? I, I don't know if you're guilty or not. I do. Okay. And I am not guilty. No, it's a I'm, matrix attack. I want to be clear to you. It's a matrix attack. So the matrix is a real thing people believe in. And if that's true, I think you should be considered a conspiracy theorist. I really do. If you believe in the matrix, I think you should be completely dismissed as a conspiracy theorist. The idea that you are living your lives thinking there is a matrix. Are you... Ma'am, ma'am, there is no matrix. There's just people being people, humans being human. There is no matrix. And the fact that people cannot contend with that, the fact that people cannot radically accept that there is no matrix, there's only people being people. And Andrew Tate, by the way, if there was a matrix, he would be one of the players in the matrix. He's a part of a scamming organization, a criminal organization that coerces and convinces women to basically work for free so he can make money off of them. Hello? Like, and he like, okay. We all know the story. I'm not preempting your guilt. I've come here with a completely open mind. You've been charged with serious offenses, but I am not going to judge you because I'm not a judge and this is not a courtroom, right? But it's interesting to me that one of the biggest charges against you is that you're a misogynist. And you've always said, I'm not a misogynist. And then the last time I interviewed you, you said, well, I may have said some things that you know, may have been misconstrued. But even in the last week, you've tweeted some stuff, which I'm not even sure if you're aware as you tweet this stuff, how it sounds. Read it. OK, let's read. This is quite a long one. Sure. But I think it's important to read it to get a sense of how you view women. Absolutely. Any woman I date does not have a job. Um, OK, so the woman you're with doesn't have a job. No. OK. Do you date other women? Sometimes. And your partner's fine with that? Obviously. Yeah? And you, you're fine with that? Why wouldn't I be? Well, you think it's fine to be dating other women when you're 
when you, you have a mother and I think and we're kids. consenting adults and everybody can make their own personal decisions. Okay, fair enough. Why would I be working so hard, you say, to have hundreds of millions for my woman to waste her life in slaved pennies? No. I will give you a life you can never ever afford. Private jets, five-star hotels, new cars, endless spending money and diamonds. You'll be rich because you're praying for me every day and protecting my spirit. I work in the physical world, she works in the spirit realm. Women shouldn't have to work because being a good partner is a She works in the spiritual realm, praying for my success, and I work in the real world. A full-time job for a woman. She has to look good. All the beauty my spirit. I work in the physical world, she works in the spirit realm. Women shouldn't have to work because being a good partner is a full-time job for a woman. She has to look good. All the beauty treatments are time intensive. Not about money, it takes a lot of time. She has to train every day and stay in fantastic shape. Shop to look amazing next to me. I know there are some men who do a hundred times more than this on a daily basis, but women are not as organized as men and achieving anything significant causes them huge amounts of stress. Yeah. They need to have huge sections of their day empty to waste or they will have a mental breakdown. True. And do you want a woman who's stressed and angry after the commute, unshaven and exhausted? Or do you want a Barbie doll who's always smiling and saying thank you because she did her nails and brought you proud of that day? As a man, unless you're a loser, you're already filthy rich, right? You can get endless sex anyway. Girls are easy. So what can a girl give you? Happiness, vibes, always smiling. Take the edge of a stressful life. Can she always be happy if she's been working all day? No. Just to wake up at 11, gym till 1, one appointment and some shopping. Dress beautiful by 7 p.m. Um, if I'm waking up at 11, I'm not even a person until 1. So I ain't going to no gym at 1. I'm starting my day. I'm taking a shower at 1. Like I need two hours in the morning to drink my coffee and do nothing. Maybe I work a little bit. Maybe I don't. For you to finish working and tell you how strong you are. No matter how pissed off you are, just to always be laughing and smiling and writing your little notes about how you're perfect. And just to be playful and funny. She can't do that if she has a job. So your job is being my girlfriend, and now you're a millionaire. Congratulations. Behave and aim for the promotion to wife. The reason I read all that in detail was, I don't think you understand quite... Oh my gosh, that was a lot, bro. Okay, so for every guy that is like Andrew Tate, there's a woman who's going to compliment that lifestyle. I just saw a TikTok actually online. Maybe you can use it as reference of, uh, as an example of the kind of woman that would prefer an Andrew Tate. Okay. So ignore that. I'll show you a woman that would want an Andrew Tate. Okay. It says Eastern European girls, when they see a uh, women splitting the bill, Okay, so it says, I do not split the bills though. And it says, as a Latina, I could never, my dad would kill. Um, we've been married four years. Sometimes I pay most of the time he doesn't. I'm Latina, but I can relate. I'm not Slavic, but I want to puke when I see it. Say you forget money and go outside to call your brother who will threaten him. Eastern European women, Muslim women. Other women are not as beautiful as Eastern European remem uh, women. Remember that. Sometimes a no-win situation, you know, blah, 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 blah. Everyone's like talking about their own bubble and what they relate to and what works for them and what works for whoever. Listen, if you're the kind of woman that absolutely doesn't want to pay for your bills and wants a man to treat you like a princess, go fucking do that. But understand the kind of men that usually are willing to treat women like princesses are usually the men who are riddled with misogyny. And usually the women who uphold that misogyny are these kinds of women. So for every misogynistic man, there is a internalized misogynistic woman who absolutely thinks women are less than men and they should be doing these things and they should be these kinds of wives. Great. Marry each other and leave the rest of us alone. Leave the rest of us alone. And that's the problem. It's like, I don't care. I'm into it for you. You do you. I do not care. People are being raised in religions I don't believe in. People are being raised with beliefs I don't believe in. I do not care. What I care about is this idea that people think it's inherently biological or necessary or as if we don't adapt or that women like me don't exist and that secretly I don't want to work and I'm just hoping my man will one day become a billionaire so I can just stay at home and be a girl. Sir, 
Sir, not interested. The idea of needing to leave my house to go shopping makes me want to literally unalive myself. Why would I want to go shopping? Why would I want to spend money when I could stay at home and just watch anime or relax or work? Like, I love these women who just like want to shop all day and do their nails and get their lips done. I love that. What a life. Great. Sounds like my literal fucking nightmare. Sounds like my literal fucking nightmare. And again, I don't care if you do that, but you seem to care that I'm doing this and that's the problem. The issue isn't that you're doing that the issue is that you think you have the objective answer for 8 billion people and you are projecting your wants onto everybody else or you are maybe that's the wrong word you are assuming we are all secretly wishing we had this life I do not want this life and if you are a woman who wants that life make it known to the men you're dating because plenty of your men would love to play this game with you go do it over there but some of us don't want to play this game some of us want a normal partner who wants to have a normal life with us and have a happy existence a lot of us just want a partner that sees us and can talk to us and have conversations with us. We're not interested in doing this whole like be a Barbie doll for me thing. We're just, we don't want that. You know, some of you do and that's great. So the issue again is not that you guys have these lives or that you want these lives. You do you. The issue is thinking that everyone secretly wants them because we don't. You know, because we don't. Like I don't want that life. You know what I mean? Like introverts go to hell, apparently. Like we don't want to do this, okay? Like this isn't the life we want. We don't want to be trad wives. We don't want to be this. That's not the reality. That's not what I want. So again, as long as we can all do what we want, then I'm good. I'm kosher. You do you. But acting like we want what you want is just so outrageous, right? Not into it, right? Um, Brittany, you, wait, you man married you, your man married you for the vibes. It's facts. We met vibes all around, bro. Let's go. I don't want another mom. I already got that. I just want a friend who's pretty. I mean, (laughs) that's one way to put it, bro. I like that. You know, it's just, again, I don't care that you want to do this life. I don't care if you want to be a trad con wife, whatever, do you, but don't think like, Oh, how sad for those feminists over there. Like people aren't lonely because they're feminists. They're lonely because they don't know why they want to be partnered. You're not lonely because you're an Andrew Tate fan and women won't date you. You're lonely because you don't have a relationship with your consciousness. You don't even know why you want to be partnered. Like you guys don't even know why you want to be partnered. I talk to men every day that are like, oh, I think I'm into this girl. Of course, they're always 10 years younger. And I really like her a lot. She makes me feel really seen. And all they do is like game and hang out all day. And I'm like, cool. But like, if that's all you need in a partnership, you could just get a dog. Like, I mean, dogs don't game. But like, again, that's great. I love that. I love that for you. But when I'm talking about longevity and marriage, I'm not talking about a man, Andrew Tate, who is literally known as saying, The best way to be a father is to have children with many women around the world and send them money every month and never show up for them. Elon Musk, Andrew Tate, other people on the internet, having a child and sending them a paycheck is not being a father. It's not being a father. If you were a real father, you would have given up your life and your career to be home every day with your kid and minimized your fame. And I mean this very specifically. My dad had a career in which he was always off on Sundays and always home for dinner because he prioritized being a father. He kept his career and his job, but he never traded in his kids and the time with his kids for his work because he was first and foremost a husband and a father. And this is the difference. This is the sacrifice you make as a parent. Funny enough, Casey Neistat was telling that to Logan Paul. Like once you become a parent, you will and you should put your career on the back burner. And I agree with that. I do. I think when you become a parent, you better be home tucking your kids into bed. And if you choose a career where you're not doing that, you're basically abandoning your child and justifying it because, quote, this is your dream. If it was your dream, you should have thought about that before you forced a person into existence. And if you're too poor and this is the only job you can get, then you have to admit it's a shitty situation for you and your kid. Stop justifying it with, this is my dream, so I have to do it. Well, I'm too poor, I have to do it. Either way, you put your kid and your like situation, you put, you made a shitty situation for everybody. So until I hear you admit that out loud, I don't want to hear it. We're all doing our best in our shitty situations. Quite how that comes over. Because... Oop, hold on. That is the pure- I had lowered down the volume for the TikTok. Purest definition of misogyny I've probably ever read. Well, I don't think you understand. One, especially when I'm talking about the fact that women can't handle what men can do, etc. One, it's slightly sarcastic. There's a sarcastic. Tone. So, do you mean any of this? Oh, I mean all of it. So he's being sarcastic. He's saying, um, "You don't understand that the tweet was sarcastic. It was like I was being sarcastic." 
Yeah, throw this man out with the baby bathwater. Throw the baby out with the bathwater. Take Andrew Tate and throw him out. He's useless. He's a liar. He's a scammer. He can't be trusted. We have no idea what he's saying. We have no way to like, you know what I mean? Same with Sneeko, who I love. And I'm wishing Sneeko a... Please, I'm wishing for Sneeko to have a transformation and end his association with these fucking losers. Grow up. Stop lying to yourselves and admit you fucked up so you can be a completely better and happier person or don't and stay miserable. But this is misery. This is misery in a package. Andrew Tate is a miserable human being. Any woman I'm with, I will provide for because I'm No woman should work. They should spend all day beautifying themselves for you, right? And they make you- Who cares? Yes, fine. Live a life where she's a princess and she never works and all she does is be beautiful. But make sure the women really want that because a lot of us don't and make sure there are no consequences for someone who doesn't want that. Promoted this to is, wife. This is Your job is being my girlfriend. There are, there are hundreds of millions of women around the world who do a good day's work who still manage to be a very good wife or Agreed. partner. Right? Agreed, completely. But it's my So life. why would you encourage, why would you encourage a whole generation of young men? I mean, I've got to be honest, since our last two interviews, before you were arrested, I would say every single day I have young men. And by the way, no one should be doing 50-50 in a relationship. You should be doing 100-100. You should not be doing 50-50. You should not pay the bills 50-50. You should both be putting in 100-100. And if you can't figure out what that means, now, if you want to be roommates, then do 50-50. If you want to be roommates, absolutely do 50-50. If you want to be partners, 100-100. Teenage boys, maybe early 20s, coming up to me asking about you. Yep. It's gone on every day yep. since I interviewed you. I'm very aware of your reach. I'm very aware of your influence. And I've, I've, whenever I've been asked about you, they say, what do you think of him? I said, I don't really- Yeah, his ideal woman is an ornament. Basically, men date women to hold up trophies cool men are monkeys not all men just the men in this group no i find myself agreeing with 60 to 70 percent of the things you say and i do because i think a lot of the stuff you say about empowering young yeah. men to be confident to work out to take care of themselves to have enough to, money to not allow, not force their woman to work right but, well, that's the bit that's the bit where when you stray in shadow b says i get what you're saying but 50 50 is the same ratio as 100 100 but it's not it's not most couples who run 50-50, when they say that, they mean literally the couples I know that say 50-50, so anecdotal and bubble, literally say, babe, 50% of the rent is due. They say, I'm not going to get with a guy or a girl unless she can pay 50% of the rent, 50% of the bills. They literally will absolutely do down this, like actual 50-50, like, babe, can you Venmo, Venmo me my $10? That is not the same as 100-100. I am peeking on my mic. That is not the same as 100-100. Do you understand the difference? I am talking about people who actually practice 50-50, like with a roommate. They literally will say, babe, can you Venmo me? I've met couples. I've known them. I call them parallel dating relationships. I call them roommate relationships where you're with somebody you claim is your long-term partner and they literally say, oh yeah, I pay 50% of the rent and 50% of the electricity or I pay this much of the rent and this much of this. They actually itemize like the bills for the home and that's very specific. Into that kind of language, particularly in the detail where you reveal what you're really thinking. A, the kind of pathetic, soulless life you want for these women. Where does it allow for being a mother? For I know couples that don't even mix finances to the point that if one partner has more credit card debt than the other partner, it's like none of their business. They don't mix finances. They don't talk about it. That's fine. You do you. But that sounds a lot like roommates to me, which is fine. You do you. Example. Being absolutely that's how does a mother of your children manage to find time for being a mother how does, in yeah, this how routine does, of love and devotion does, to how, you how does having a job give her time to be a mother this gives her all it doesn't i just had a conversation with my homie over this like realistically if you're a working mom you are not there for your child as much as a mom who isn't working and if you're a working dad you're not there for your child as much as a working parent and working father ultimately fathers do have to work and miss out 
on time with their children and there is a detriment done to the child. But of course, we live in reality where people have to work. So you have to admit out loud that I am forcing a person into existence to have less than a perfect existence, which is fine because there's no such thing as perfect. And we're going to do our best with this. I'm saying it's funny how we're so eager to make a new baby without holding any responsibility to how we could be doing it better or how we could wait a moment or how we, you know, it's different when it's an accident and completely unplanned. And I get that teen pregnancy and accidental and assault pregnancy. I'm not counting any of those things, but I'm saying if you're saying I'm a smart, reasonable adult and I'm making this decision with my full chest and then you're like, oh my gosh, who's going to be home to take care of my kid? Who's going to like, you know what I'm saying? I'm all I'm saying is a lot of people are out here making a lot of permanent decisions for people that aren't them and they don't want to. They don't want to admit that it is causing harm all the same, right? Like, again, harm is on a spectrum. Existence is harm. So, again, I'm not saying perfection is the goal. I'm just saying I would love to have people who just admit out loud, like, oh, yeah, we're in a, like, a messy situation. But, like, you know, what are you going to do? You do your best. But if you can't even say it's messy, you know? All the time in the world to be a mother. One, it's slightly sarcastic, firstly. What, what Secondly, do you, what do you mean? Well, you, you mean can you tell don't, by the tone. Do you mean you don't mean it? No, I mean it. Well, what, which, which but it's be, slightly sarcastic. Well, sarcasm or means, comedic effect. Sarcasm means you don't mean it. No, I mean it. But it's slightly well, you sarcastic. You either mean it or you don't. It's either sarcastic or it's not. I mean every single word. But this is the conundrum but with you, Andrew. Cartastic. Andrew, sarcastic. this is the conundrum with you. Right? It's because not a conundrum. If you'd let me explain, it's not a conundrum at all. You tweet. And also, you would tweet be this. Interesting. I tweeted this out. I get thousands of women yeah. begging me, in- inboxing me, saying, finally, a man who understands he needs to provide for a woman so she can be her best self. Right. This is exactly the kind of life that will allow no, women no, to be. No, there are definitely women that will absolutely love to be so why don't you, treated why, like this. Are they this. misogynists? Uh, no, but what yes, I think. Yes, internalized they are- misogyny, 100%. In order for a woman to believe she is a princess or a queen who deserves to be served and doted on and like treated like an infant, basically, yeah, I do think you have to have internalized misogyny or you are less on the independence scale. Like again, when I'm reading like independence in a person, obviously you can't be independent and call yourself a queen or call yourself a princess or say like men should pay for dinner. What part of that that is being independent? Now, there are women who are more independent than me, right? There are, there are men who are more independent than my husband, but we are higher on the spectrum of independence than other people, right? Like independence is a, is a relationship you're having, right? But I think the conundrum is with people who like want to be independent. It's, it's the same thing Myron says. And then the dilemma is that he meets women who say they want to be like, who want to work, who want to do all these things, but they genuinely just want the title of independent without the lifestyle of independency, which is fine. Like getting married is a form of dependency, right? Because we're depending on each other now. But again, how you have that marriage is different. Andrew Tate wants a woman who's completely dependent on him, right? Completely dependent on him. That's what he wants. And that's fine if you want that. But it's a little weird. Like my mom and dad would say they had a a traditional marriage with gender roles, but my mom worked when the kids were really young and she worked after the kids graduated high school. When the kids were basically the youngest ones were in high school, she started working again. So my mom works. That wouldn't fit into Andrew Tate's world. Do you understand that Andrew Tate isn't just advocating for a world where like women stay home with children. He's advocating for a world where women never work, which is fine if you want to do that. But even my own mother, who adheres to gender roles and expectations, women work. My grandma in Iraq worked. The women worked because, like, you're a team and you do what's necessary. But also, like, what are the women going to do in retirement? They want to do something. Women want to work. That's why men also don't retire. My dad's probably not going to retire for a really long time, and neither is my mom because, like, all their kids are raised. Like, what are they going to do with their time except work? Work is enjoyable for a lot of people. And it's necessary in this world where they're not going to get a retirement from the Social Security. Like realistically, like our senior citizens in America aren't getting the right amount of retirement. And Andrew Tate is like a a 1% or a 0.1%er. Like he's not a normal person. And normal people are going to have to save for retirement and their parents are probably going to be working. And it means your mom and your dad. So... Yeah. They're people who just basically, it's the old sugar daddy thing, right? They want to have a rich guy who's going to pamper them and take care of them. They don't have to do a day's work. They just have to make Being themselves a good partner look is good a day's for you. Work. Well, so you say. 
Yeah. But it also, the language that you use here seriously diminishes women who do work. You make them out to be, well, you're not doing your job as a partner or wife. You should be doing your job, which is just to devote yourself to his pleasure and making well, him well, happy. Well, it's actually interesting you say that because I'll put a lot of the fault of this on men. Let's, let's, if you want to gender the argument, let's do that. I think that a lot of the reason why women can't live this life, if they so choose, if you're a woman who decides to work, then go to work. I don't care. But if you're a woman who decides she wants to retire, it's because she can't find a man who could provide for her at this level. See, you, he's doing it right now. You think when a woman marries a billionaire that she wants to go get a job in Starbucks? Because in my experience, when they marry extremists- No, who wants to work at Starbucks? You get a job that means something to you. you. Get the privilege of picking a job where you're not worried about the income. Of course, nobody like, or maybe you choose, or maybe you choose Starbucks. Like that rapper we were watching who works at the grocery store. He works there to show his kids that you need to work hard. See how Andrew Tate is basically like, this is why I hate spoiled bubbles. Like people who like, I'm spoiled. I'm a brat. I'm a princess. Like you're useless to me. Go away. Go away. You contribute nothing to anybody. Go away. Because literally you want to be raising good, competent adults who have skill sets, who can contribute to culture and society. That's why I like that interview we watched. I don't know which rapper it was, but he was saying like, yes, of course I'm rich. I'm wealthy. But like I'm I don't want my kids to think like this came from nothing. And so I work a job so my kids can see me working a job. Because if your kids don't see you working a job, and maybe that job is Starbucks, maybe it's Walmart. Like, again, we're talking, that's what I'm saying. Like, nobody wants to be a parent. People just want to have kids. Nobody wants to be a good person. People just want to feel good about themselves successful men they don't want a job i'm sure ronaldo's wife isn't begging to go work in ikea actually no. ronaldo's wife works very hard she works for herself which is different and her family of course yeah which is different. she's a hard working woman absolutely it's still work fantastic. it's still work work does not mean minimum wage labor right but there's nothing wrong with being the backbone of this country right which is a part of being minimum wage labor the backbone of this country is everybody and the part of that is minimum wage workers, which is why they need to be treated better, which is why they also need to be people who like are like, <sighs> I don't think it's true for Croatia at all. But I asked my partner this. I said, I noticed that your minimum wage workers are like much more respectable than American workers. Like the place is beautiful and clean. Everyone's got a good attitude. And he goes, uh, it's just the town that we're in probably. And they're older. But yeah, of course they're happy. Like they aren't facing the stress that Americans are, are stressing about. So they can work minimum wage and do pretty okay here. I mean, they're not like in the fanciest of places. They're not like in a nor like I'm in a luxury apartment in, um, in Croatian terms. In America, um, I'm actually technically in a, in a really nice apartment, but it's not quite the same. Like the my sister is paying the same more a little bit more for her one bedroom, one bath than I'm paying for my three bedroom, three bath. So just in terms of, you know what I mean? But minimum wage workers, the environment we cur curate for them, I feel like we should be able to say these are good jobs and you're going into a good job. When I worked minimum wage at the deli, at the supermarkets, if I was having a good day and I had a good boss and good customers, I liked that job. It was a great job. It was only hard when people felt like they were taking advantage of you or you were getting a 10-cent ten, ten raise or people didn't care about you or people didn't care if you could pay your bills or eat. Like, that was the hard part. So again, Andrew Tate is talking about this fantasy. All these people talk about this fantasy world. And even that woman, Manifestel or whatever, where she was like, don't get mad, get paid. She was like, I want to be spoiled, but also I want to be independent, but also I want to be the prize, but also I don't want to be the trophy. And I'm like, ma'am... You're giving me a fucking migraine, ma'am. Fantastic partner and having a bunch of children is a bunch of hard work. Mm -hmm. And she also finds the energy to have a, a, a businesses on the side. Fantastic. Right. But, you so don't want, saying here, but you don't want women. See, it's like, it's like, um, it's like that to be better where they're like, we adhere to traditional gender roles. And I never thought I would be like a, a, a mom, a stay at home mom. Um, you run a podcast. You're not a stay at home mom. If you, Andrew Tate's like, oh, if he, if he, she's a mom and she has a business on the side, then you're not, not working. You're still working. Like, why do these people think if you have a side hustle at home, you're not working? If you're paying the government tax, you're working. Okay. And if you are a mom, that's a lifestyle. If you're a dad, it's a lifestyle. To have business. No, I'm saying if you're with a man of my stature, you don't have to work. Now, if I met a perfect woman and we were together and we were happy. But why wouldn't I work? Happy when you say a man of your stature, with respect, right now you have no income, no <laughs> possessions, <laughs> and you're facing... Flat. You're facing broke. serious criminal charges. I mean, I'm not quite sure. Is he's claiming to be flat broke? 
not sure what stature you think you're currently selling, but it ain't great. Okay, well then, it's a shame all those women in... I'm sorry, you need to listen to that again. Stature, you children is a bunch of hard work. Mm -hmm. And she also finds the energy to have a, a, a businesses on the side. Fantastic. Right. But you so don't want... See, businesses on the side. So she's not... She is working. Yeah, but you don't want women to have businesses. No, I'm saying if you're with a man of my stature, you don't have to work. Now, if I met a perfect woman and we were together and we were happy... When you say a man of your stature, with respect, right now you have no income, no possessions, Correct. I'm and you're facing... Flat. You're Black facing work. serious criminal charges. I mean, I'm not quite sure what stature you think you're currently selling, but it ain't great. Okay, well then, it's a shame all those women inbox me after I put that tweet out saying, I've got no we agree with you. I think you should interview I met a woman yesterday who, when I said I was coming to interview, was immediately like, oh, can you put a good word in for me? Of course. Sure. You have a, you have a definite appeal to a certain type of woman. There's no question. I my, think my question, providing my for question a woman is if financially I was... is a man's responsibility. If that means I'm a misogynist, then I'm a misogynist. No, my, is, I think so you accept, you accept you are a misogynist? No, I think a man should provide for a woman financially. Interesting that he won't tolerate being called a misogynist, but he'll tolerate being called a lover boy and coercion if he can twist it for his own definition. Completely and utterly. If she wants to work, if my partner were to say to me right now, I really feel like getting a job, it would make me happy. Then I'll say, well, Okay, interesting. Work. But she doesn't have to. Her job is looking after the children, looking after me, and being as happy as possible. If you think I'm a bad person for saying, if you actually read that. So men like him look at women who work like a hobby. Like, oh, how cute. You have a job. Oh, my God. That's so cute. Like, <laughs> do you have a job? He's saying, like, women, when they work, it's a hobby. And when men work, it's, like, to sustain a lifestyle. Read mm. the subtext and context. I read it all out. Okay, good. Then you understand what I'm saying. You know I did. You heard it. Absolutely. So what I'm saying is, I am a man. My life is stressful. My life is pain. I go to jail. I suffer. I have to deal with making money. I have constant, endless headache. I do all of that so I can give you everything, but then I get to have... Men are so pathetic. You're all so pathetic. Literally, if your happiness and sanity is dependent on a woman being dependent on you... You need to be introspective and meditate. You need to find God or something. You need to do something else with your life. This is the most degenerate way of thinking that I've ever seen in my whole life. But also, like, I don't even believe you when you say it. Like, I just don't. Because, again, you're doing it for the benefit of looking cool in front of your bros and for your own ego. It is not for the woman. And the woman convinces herself it's for her as well. But it's only for her if she's like a gold digger. This is so degenerate in so many ways. But it's so human. Humans are inhuman. You. Your job is to be happy. I want you to smile. I want you to look your best and feel your best all of the time. If I'm Why don't you smile more, bitch? I'm a misogynist for saying that I go through so much pain so that we can be financially secure. So I hope the woman I care about does not have to work a job. If that makes me a bad person, then so be it. Because all I'm saying is I want to take care of her in every single realm. I take care of her physical safety. I take care of her financial security. That is my job as a man. And if more men acted like me, you will see that the world would be a happier and better place. See, if more men acted like me, the world would be a happier and better place. Maybe for a large part of the world, but at the same time, I'm not sure. When Brittany tells you to find God, you know you're fucking up. <laughs> True. True. But that's interesting. That's the issue I'm finding. If the world was more like me, it'd be a better place. I don't have that ego on me. I don't think if the world would, is, would be, if the world is like me, it would be a better place. I don't know what would make your life better. I don't know what life you want for yourself. Right? Like to have that ego on you, to say if the world was more like me, the world would be a better place. Well, not for me. If men were more like Andrew Tate, my life would be awful. I would want to unalive myself. I would feel trapped and coerced. I wouldn't have the life I wanted. I, that's absolutely not going to happen. And when I make the decisions I want to make, I'm told I'm making the wrong decisions, even though I have found my joy. That's the issue. Is this is real life? Sometimes I feel like I'm literally not even here right now. I feel like I'm, this is like fake. Am I dreaming? Am I even here? Hello? Am I live on YouTube? Am I live? Like, is this real life? Why do people think so much, uh, so much like this? Because they're high on narcissism. I'm telling you. They're very egocentric. I have the answer for everybody. I just know if you're like me, you'll be happier. I know if you're like me, you'll be happier. I don't know that. You're not me. Why would I go to somebody who's so different from me and think if you're more like me, you'll be happier? I don't know.
That's why I think I am the best at taking calls and doing my work because I always say like, who are you? What do you do? Okay, how do I make you happy? Which is very different. People who think that their way is the highway are the problem with the universe. We've had this discussion in VC so many times on Discord where people are always like, Brittany, don't you think the world would be better if they thought more like you? Why would I think that? What kind of narcissistic brain would I have to have to think if the world would be better if the world was more like me? What kind of a narcissist would I have to be to literally think that is true? You're insane. The women who say, I really want to work, I want a career, that's their prerogative and their decision. They're allowed to do that. But also, often the reason they do that is because they can't find a man they trust to take care of them. No. I've, had this, I've had this from women in their own Andrew, mouth. If I found a man who was said, financially secure and as smart as you, I wouldn't be doing this fine. garbage job either. Why was I psyoped into working to pay taxes when I should be at home having children oh, with a Andrew, man door? Andrew, it's a psyop. Andrew, there are so many women that will listen to that and be laughing. Oh, wait. Eon, or, uh, Andrew Tate takes it to the degeneracy, but I don't think it's unfair to generally to say generally that people want to feel needed. I think it is okay that some people need to feel needed, but people are having a different relationship with feeling needed. And I just don't relate. Like I, I know what it's like to want to be seen and to see people. And I like to feel like I'm doing right in the in way of my values. And I, but I don't know what you mean when you say needed, because I don't know what that means from a personal perspective. So when people say like, I want to feel needed, it's like, why? Is that your animal monkey brain? Or did you actually choose that for yourself? Are you evoking free will? Or are you saying it's your biology? Have you ever thought about meditating past that so you don't have to do that? What does it mean to be needed by people, guys? What does that mean? Do you mean if you're a parent and you owe an obligation to raise your child and to be good towards them? Well, that makes sense. If you're saying you're in a partnership and you feel, I don't want to feel needed by my partner. I want to feel like I'm, sta I'm a good partner, which to me is not the same. Guys, what do you mean needed? Feeling needed. What does that mean? The need to feel needed is an individual sense of significance rooted in the sense of being a part of a community or cause beyond themselves. They need to be needed in one of our fundamental needing. The need to be needed is one of our fundamental desires. We want to feel significant in the eyes of others, even if it's only one person. No, I don't think I can understand that. I think I can understand it, but I would rephrase it. I wouldn't say I want to feel needed. I would say. If I'm going to participate in this activity, I would like to do my part. But if I'm not participating in this activity, why would I feel need? Why would I feel that need? The only thing I've ever desired my whole life was to understand myself, was to have a good relationship with myself and a good relationship with others when appropriate. But I, I do get a lot of satisfaction over my work and what I'm doing. And as long as I'm making money, I'm fine. But it's not about being needed. It's about doing it well. Like if I'm going to be a YouTuber, I want to do it well. If I want to be a partner, I want to do it well. But I don't think it's about being needed. Is that the same thing? Is that kind of the same thing though? If it's the same thing, then I agree. But I'm saying I want to do it well. So if you're not in that position or in that job, then like why would you have that need? And if you have that need, wouldn't it come from your own relationship with your consciousness eventually? Eventually. Right? Did Andrew Tate get new teeth? I... I was thinking the same thing. I was literally thinking Andrew Andrew Tate's teeth look different. I want to feel uh I want to feel like I'm not needed but wanted. Mm. I want to feel seen and desired in the same way like or like wanted like as a consciousness like oh I want to spend time with you. I want to enjoy your company, but also I respect boundaries, right? There's no humility in the hustle. If my husband were like this, our sex life would be terrible and we'd head towards a divorce. Amen. Same. You know? Um, I actually did have someone call my crochet business a hobby. I filed for business license and everything. Just because it can be a hobby doesn't mean my business is invalid. Literally. Your job is to be happy. Quote, this type of attitude tends to lead to people to cheating when things get hard because they're so unresistant resilient they can't stick around when things get slightly tough mm, mm, mm. 
needed equal purpose. I think we all need a purpose, but I don't understand making a woman your purpose. I don't understand making a partner your purpose, right? So I think this is like really important. I would never think like my purpose is my husband. I just need a husband and I need to do this as a wife. And this is my purpose. Like I've never thought my purpose could could evolve, involve like directly a person outside of myself. I feel like that purpose comes from within me and then I figure out how to do it within existence. Does that make sense? I just feel like the way he's saying it, like the way people say it in regards to a partner is like, what if you never find a partner? Are you saying you don't have a purpose? That is so weird to me to think that like, again, I understand the need to be a part of a community. I understand the desire to be a part of something bigger than yourself. But what does that have to do when you're talking about a partner or even like a child? Like, are you saying you only had a child to feel like you have purpose? And that's true. A lot of people say they only felt like they had purpose after they became a parent. You know what I mean? What is your purpose? My purpose is to fulfill my curiosity and to f maintain my joy. So maintaining my joy, which is to fulfill my curiosity and to maintain my joy. That is my purpose. Um, my mom and dad never instilled that in us, to be honest. I think people who want to feel needed or lonely and want a purpose, they think they'll find it in another person. I think that's based. Yes, discord. I think that's true. Have you ever wanted to feel needed? Um, I've always wanted, I've always, when I was younger and I really struggled before therapy, I wanted to feel seen and understood and loved for who I was. And and I usually felt uh, good when I worked and good when I focused on things that I liked. And I was always like a community member and an activist. So I always felt good, like with a purpose in that way, but it never felt fulfilling. It was always like shallow or hollow. It was good. It made me feel really good in the moment. But it, when I went home at night, I still cried. It didn't matter how much I volunteered. It didn't how much I nannied. It didn't matter how much I was a good sister or a good friend. When I went home, I cried. It didn't matter that I was partnered. It didn't matter because I wasn't fulfilled as a consciousness. I wasn't fulfilled within myself. I didn't have a sense of purpose within myself. So I believe for me, the meaning of purpose comes from the self. It does not come from other people. But for a lot of people, Abba talks about this a lot. He thinks people are and do live for other people. And he thinks it's kind of like a, a, a fake thing that people say they don't need people. I need my people, but I don't really, if they all died, I would survive and I would be fine. But I used to think I wouldn't be. I used to think that I would crumble under the weight of losing everybody I loved. But the truth is, is like, I don't know how I would do that now because my brain has switched to radically accept that like, of course, they're all going to die. And if there's a war, they could all die. In Palestine, this man lost 22 of his relatives in a war. In Palestine, this man lost 22 of his relatives. I am in my radical acceptance phase. I am radically going to accept that this could happen to me. And no, I'm not going to crumble and lose my sense of purpose. That is not the lineage I came from. That is not the world I've come from. Now, it's the world that I I did succumb to it at some point, like I said. I was devastated. I was like, I'm going to unalive myself if I lose everybody I love. I'm not going to do that anymore, guys. I gave up. I, I'm I transformed into a different person. I'm not going to do that anymore. I don't need people in that way. I want them and I respect them and I'm grateful for them spending their life with me and any capacity that we have them in. But also ultimately, I like myself and the relationship I have with myself. So my husband knows this and he agrees. Like if either of us die, yes, we'll be very sad. And we'll wait five years of mourning or whatever it is until we're over it. But we will move on with our life because there's we signed up for marriage knowing we were going to die on each other. It's just a matter of when and who goes first. You know? And honestly, I think we're both pretty strong in a way. So if either of us goes first, we should be fine. But, you know, does that answer? Does that make sense? So I'm not I'm not saying you shouldn't want to feel needed or you shouldn't want to be have a purpose. But I'm saying the purpose has to come from your consciousness, not from performatively being a part of something bigger than yourself.
you know, you look so cute and casual today. Love the fit. Thank you. I was toasty. I can't wear the hoodie today. I'm too hot. Can you do a uh, podcast episode on purpose? I feel like most people don't do not conceptualize their purpose as themselves, but instead something external. Sure. I'll make a note. I'm mocking you. Will there? Say, don't be so ridiculous. I have a job that I love. Maybe they're being paid even more than their man, right? The real world isn't the one that you categorize. The real world is varied and nuanced, mm. but I am talking about my life experience. There's a very my experience. Any woman I love Fine. does not have to work unless she decides. Right. To. You're the boss. You're in charge. Her job is to make you happy. Her job is to make herself look good. Her job is. Uh, I kind of feel the same way. Like, if my partner wants to work or it makes sense for the team, great. But he doesn't have to as long as he doesn't mind living off my income or our income. But if he doesn't like our income, then he can work. And if I don't like my income, I can work more. It's just like about the team. But I'm – i that's the thing. If if I made – you know that TikTok trend? If your wife made $300,000, what would you do? And it's like the husband's cooking and cleaning. Yeah, if your partner makes enough, you obviously don't necessarily need to have a job unless you want to have a job. But not everybody wants to work. And if you want to work, maybe you want to work differently. So I would say both men and women equally don't like maybe don't want to work. Tons of men I know do not want to work. Lots of men I know want to do hobbies or work at a job they like, but they don't want to have to work just to work. I like a career. Not everybody is career oriented. So I would argue like you need to be partnered with somebody that's either career oriented and you're not and they're okay with that or you both are career oriented, or you both are willing to just get jobs. Like it's just about, about matching energy. So I have no problem with Andrew Tate's women saying, I never want to work. I hate working. I just want to stay at home. Cool. Marry Andrew Tate. But again, if most men were like Andrew Tate, a lot of women would be forced into marriages in which they would probably go crazy in, which is what happened with the boomers. Men tried this and boomer women divorced them. Because they don't want to do this. They don't like it. They want independence. And again, the divorce rate is the way it is for not because of feminism, but because like men also weren't pulling their weight. You think women would have divorced these men if they were happy? Hello? Just to work out for your benefit, blah, 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 blah. It is actually just misogyny. Do you think a woman looking, and it's good, also do you think a woman looking good and working out is, has no benefit at all to her? Of course it does. Okay, so it's not for my benefit, then, is it? You Don't you see? But when you, you no, but when you talk you about when you talk about young, no, no, I don't. When you talk about young men and you tell them to work out and take care of themselves, I cheer you on, right? I want that. I've got three sons. I want them to feel that. Well, don't get, you want them to become very rich and successful? And have course. a woman who relies on them and have of a beautiful course. family. No, but I don't want a woman who's subservient to them. Why is subservience? Why is a literally woman the tone of the tweet I read is subservience? You did another tweet this week. Men love by telling you what to do and not allowing you to make stupid decisions. We save you from the female inclination to make stupid choices. If a man isn't giving you instructions, he doesn't love you. If you won't listen to a man's instructions, you don't love him. This, the whole language is so ridiculous. Let me change the language then. A well, you tweeted this to 8.2 million people. Correct. So let me say this. A father loves. Let's say instead of a man loves, say a mm. father loves. A father loves disciplinarian. That's how mm. a father will love you. A mother will say, oh, I hope you're happy. hope you're doing okay. But, but a father will come along and say, no, don't do this. You must do it that way. Here's my concern over like making other people your purpose is a lot of people have said the loneliness epidemic for men especially is because men don't have a purpose outside of partners, which is really difficult for me to understand. And I mean this in the nicest way possible. It's not the same for women. It's just not. For some women, yes, they really want to be partnered. For some women, and you should go and date those women. The dilemma, again, is that, like we're running into each other and we're not compatible. The super, super independent women that are not, up, like, again, not dependent on the need for a relationship are very different than the women that are that are chilling. Because again, like not if you're not willing to settle, you're not in the same category of people that need to be married. If you need to be married, like Char like Charlotte from Sex in the City, not a very independent woman. She's independent enough to have a job in her own apartment, but she's not actually very independent. Samantha is very independent. Right. Samantha is very independent. Carrie was very codependent. And Miranda was. Miranda settled. Miranda settled for Steve. She settled the fuck. Carrie was codependent with Big. Samantha was independent and chose herself even over Smith, who was 
basically perfect for her, but not really. And Charlotte was so lacking of independence that she forced herself to kind of like get married in a situation that wasn't even perfect or harmonious and ended up divorcing and then meeting her perfect divorce lawyer, Harry, which was wonderful. But I think you need to know where you are on the spectrum. Not everybody is as independent as anybody else, and it doesn't make you a bad person. But it is kind of frustrating when you all date each other. It is very frustrating when a man looks at me and says like, the problem is with you and the, the fact that you're not dependent enough on me. And I'm like, sir, leave. I'm dependent on my husband, but not to the degree that other people choose to be dependent on their partners. Because again, we're a team. So I'm as dependent on my husband as a football team would be on each other. It's like, yes, for this game we're playing, we are dependent on each other to pull, to do 100%, each of us. But it's not the same as like a Charlotte, right? And I'm not the same as, again, it's hard to use because the, there's only four examples in Sex and the City, but everyone's having a different relationship. And in the men who are like, I need a wife to find purpose, like I'm not going to feel purpose without having a partner. You need to date women that want to be married, like in that particular way. Because I've always wanted to be married. I just didn't want to be married because somebody needed me to fulfill them. Like, I don't want to be your purpose, bro. Cringe. No offense. But like, I don't want to be your purpose. Like, I can't handle it. I would make fun of you. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I would make fun of you. Because I think it's cringy, but it doesn't mean it's bad or immoral. I'm just saying like, no. No. I want my husband to look at me like I'm the most special person on the planet. Like I look at him, but also we are not each other's purpose. Does that make sense? And I think that sometimes like we are all dating the wrong people. And when shit hits the fan, we blame that other person. But like, stop choosing the people that aren't even like compatible with you. That way, that's incorrect. It has to be this mm. way. A father will discipline you because a father feels he knows best for you. It's the masculine essence of love. When a man loves, he shows that he cares by a degree. And there is a massive difference between a relationship between a father and a child and between a man and a woman in a relationship. Completely. And I'm not sure you quite get no, that. No, there is a difference. But I would argue, Piers, I would argue in the happiest relationships, it's a traditionally masculine role in which the man traditionally is officially i'm gonna throw it out i don't know what bubble everyone's referencing when they say traditionally so i'm throwing it out there is no tradition i don't even believe in tradition at this point tradition when what are you referencing which culture which time period which people because tradition means nothing plays and provides the female is traditionally feminine the man is the head of the house not in an abusive way doesn't beat her up i'm talking about the man being the head of the household like i would like to believe you're the head of your household and he comes along and says what happens why? and what doesn't happen why why what's head of household mean what does it even mean it only means something in the bubble you're in happen because he's the man of the house no that's not that is, that's that actually is not how most households operate now well then it sounds like we understand why the entire world's a mess because only 10 years ago that's exactly how the households uh. were operated there was a man of the house and now we have no longer any clear defined roles there's no more longer a man of the house you want to talk about knife crime kids doing drugs uh. the crime rate all of these problems you want to talk about all of the societal ills we face uh. perhaps it's because we don't have any men in the house anymore perhaps we need to bring the man of the house back and the man of the house will come along and be a disciplinarian and he will make the set rules and the creeds of that house. He will say within this household, we don't take drugs. That stands for the woman I am with, the children who we have birthed. Nobody takes drugs in this household because this is my house and I'm the man of the house. So it sounds to me like we need to bring it back, sir. Yeah, listen. Bring it back to tradition again. It means nothing when you say that, because again, what's heaven for you is hell for somebody else. What's heaven for me is hell for you. I don't want people to live like me. And I think the people that are most dangerous on the planet are people who think that their way is the best way for all people are generally more people. It's all good macho stuff, okay? And I know lots of young boys who listen to this and go, wow, that's how I should be. Then I read the detail of your tweets. And again, come back to this, we save women from their female inclination to make stupid choices. Females are emotional. If a man isn't giving females you are emotional. Females are emotional. Hang on, hang on. Females are emotional, so I spent this whole interview yelling and losing my shit at you. See, when men lose their shit, they're making a point. When women do the same, they're emotional. He and by the way, that's the same energy in debate spaces on the internet. When the men lose their shit, it's fun, and it's like, oh, he's molding, but it's like funny. When a girl does it, she's BPD. 
Cluster B, Cluster B, Cluster B. Love you. Are, all, this stuff, all this stuff is designed to, exactly as you've just articulated, is designed to make young men feel that the only way they can be successful in life is to effectively have their women under control, give them instructions that, they have, them that they have to obey. Oh, don't you but here, but here, don't me, buy women Prada, finish. you'll end up in jail. Oh, you can buy them Prada, but let me, let me finish my point. My point See is, how bad faith is that? Don't buy women Prada, they'll end up in jail. You'll end up in jail. Is that it seems to me from reading your tweets, even now, that you have a blind spot when it comes to how they sound. I and it may no, be, and it may be that the legal problems that you're in, which might be extremely serious. Maybe the bubble you built for yourself, sir, is about to pop on itself. Maybe the world you built for yourself, Andrew, wasn't as good because it's biting you in the butt. And we'll see when the trial happens. But it may be that in your head, nothing you've done is remotely inappropriate because actually in your tweets, you can see there's an element there of wanting coercion and control. You want to control women. You want them to be effectively your servants, slaves, for want of a better slaves, phrase. Slaves who get Prada and get to work out in the gym and get to look. Do you know some of the slaves in America were actually really loved by their slave owners? And do you know their slave owners actually looked at them like family? We need to be very clear about how we define a good life and a free life and life with choice. We need to be very clear about how we define life with choice. You can coerce, molest, assault. You can be cruel to somebody you also buy Prada for. But it's, it's, a, it's a cognitive dissonance game they play with themselves. How bad of a person can I be when I pay her bills? How bad of a person can I be when I'm there for her? How bad of a person can I be if... At least I'm not this to her. At least I'm not doing 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 this to her. If you're always comparing yourself to somebody who's worse, that's a red flag, right? Do you understand But you understand the point I'm making? No, I don't. Because which is in your head, the line is blurred so much now with this macho rhetoric that you've actually lost track of how this sounds. Here's all of the things I Even when I read that stuff to you, I could see you looking at me and you said, your answer is, I was being sarcastic. No. And I said, well, where? And then you go, well, no, I meant it. Well, it can't be both. I meant it and I said you either it's mean sarcastic it. tone. You either mean it effect. or it's, well, no, because sarcasm means you don't mean it. Pierce, all the things we've just described. Do, do you accept that? No, I, You're a I smart meant... guy. You know what sarcasm means, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I said it has a sarcastic tone for comedic effect. Mm. All the things I'm saying, and the things I've said are basically the way the entire world thought only 10 years ago. You may buy- That's not true. That's not true. The whole world thought this way 10 years ago. What is the whole world? He's saying he knew what 8 billion people were thinking 10 years ago. Buy into the PSYOP and you may buy into the new thing. I don't buy into any PSYOPs. Uh, we just talked about the vaccine, sir. Yeah, the vaccine. I so Andrew's anti-vax, okay. And he's saying if you believe in the vaccine, you believe in the matrix. We should disregard, we shouldn't stop talking to him. Genuinely, we should just, he's useless. He's a conspiracy theorist. You weren't psyops. Uh, of course not. No. So I believe that there should be a man of the house. You had a polio vaccine. <laughs> right. Why? Rock Plato says, not Pierce saying, you boy, you've lost this plot. Bro, you've lost the plot. Andrew Tate has lost the plot. His empire is crumbling because he never had any values to, to rely on. He was scamming everyone from day one and it's crumbling in front of him. It's just what it is. Because I didn't get polio. I wouldn't have a COVID vaccine because so I'd still get COVID. Plus, probably myocarditis. Did you hear this fucking listen to this? I don't buy into any psyops. Uh, we just talked about the vaccine, sir. Yeah, the vaccines I... weren't psyops. Uh, of course not. No. So I believe that there should be a man of the house. You had a polio vaccine, right? Correct. Why? Because I didn't get polio. I wouldn't have a COVID. You had the polio vaccine, right? Yeah. Why? Because I didn't get polio. You may buy into the PSYOP, you may buy into the new thing. I don't buy into any PSYOPs. Uh, we just talked about the vaccine, sir. Yeah, the vaccines I... weren't PSYOPs. Uh, of course not. No. So I believe that there should be a man of the house. You had a polio vaccine, right? Correct. Why? Because I didn't get polio. I wouldn't have a COVID vaccine because I'd still get COVID. Plus probably myocarditis and have a heart attack. Mm. So we do, believe do there was a man you, of the house 10 years think, ago. Do you think statistically more people got myocarditis 
by having the vaccine or not having it? I think statistically we need to bring you don't, it back. You don't know, do you? Why would I know? Why would I look at the statistics why would you bother to, why that would you, come from the matrix itself? So the matrix. The matrix so, every, so is he being sarcastic here? Or he actually believes in the matrix, which whether or not he's using that as a euphemism or a, an example of like what he really means, the they that are in charge, right? He, do you get what I'm saying? He's lost it. He's lost it. The fact you don't like, because it doesn't suit your agenda, you just dismiss his matrix bullshit. No, I'll give you a very simple way I view the world. COVID can't hurt me, so mm. why would I take their injection? Mm. You don't, two, two. you don't have to. Point two. don't have to. They tried it. to make us, including you. Yeah. You told people yes. you they know should why? have the vaccine. You know why? If they don't have it, they shouldn't leave their house. You know why? Because at the time, the scientists... Well, the and scientists. by the way, scientists is ever-evolving. At the time I said that, the scientists said if you had the vaccine, it would prevent you transmitting the virus. The Matrix. That, that. turned out to be wrong. Because the Matrix And they lies. issued updated advice saying updated. further studies. Okay, but listen to me when I say this. I only had COVID once and it was like the worst three weeks of my life. And I'm pretty sure I have long, long COVID. Um, I was like in so much pain. It absolutely, I think, triggered a part of my fibro. But um, I went to the doctor. I eventually got my vaccination and my boosters and everything. I never had COVID again as far as I know. But my friend who got vaxxed and boosted right away when she got COVID it was like having a cold she's like I don't even feel I could feel like I could work right now but she couldn't I felt like death I felt like death incarnate I felt like it was the worst thing I'd ever have all the people in my life who get COVID and are like it's no big deal I'm like okay then some of us it was a big deal and that's what matters not everybody had the same reaction to it but COVID was the worst thing I ever had I would not recommend it I really think it's like it's really bad but maybe it won't be as bad for you but it was really bad for me. So. Said that actually you could transmit it. And at that point, you know what I did, which you never do? I held my hands up and went, I was wrong because the advice changed. And now I would not say the same thing. That is called actually evolving opinions when facts change. Let me give That's you actually how a civilized democracy works. Oh, is it? We live in a civilized democracy, do we, sir? I actually would argue that point with you for very for a very long time. I don't mm -hmm. think we live in a civilized democracy. Another point I want to make here, if I had cancer or if I was at threat of a genuine disease which could actually harm me, would the NHS text me 10 times a day trying to get me treatment or would I be sitting there waiting for eight I think months the way to the, get an appointment? I think the way they wouldn't care about me and they'd let me die. The way so the, the fact that they will endlessly text me and so try annoying. and beg me to get this poison. Is this like an act? What do you guys think he's doing? So he's obviously scamming conservatives by pretending to grift in them, right? So, but does he believe any part of it or is he actually just like playing a character? Do you think him and Tristan were like having a sleepover and they're like, okay, big bro, what are you going to do tomorrow? Well, little bro, I'm going to pretend that these are my talking points, little bro. Oh my God, big bro. That's so smart, big bro. Like, what do you think they're doing? Like, if I ever did this, my husband would have me institutionalized. He'd be like, my wife is going crazy. This is literally insanity. But it's not insanity. Like, I don't think he's actually insane. I think he's grifting. Actually, they've, I'll tell you what the NHS sent me. I'm a 58-year-old man. In the last few months, they've sent me uh, one about a flu jab, which I'm going to have. Because um, I think it stops you getting flu, and flu's nasty. Yeah. Uh, a COVID booster, which I won't have. I think I've had enough. Look, of uh, many things kill many people. So I don't care. You do you with your body. Like, I believe in your right to do what you want with your body. And I believe in the right of institutions to, like, encourage people to take certain things, whatever. Okay? I'm going to be vague. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So you do you. Okay? I'm just sharing my personal experience. Having COVID sucked. I didn't like it. Um, I feel great being vaxxed and boosted. It makes me feel better. And I haven't gotten sick since with COVID as far as I know. So I feel really good about that. And I regret not getting it sooner. But that was my personal experience, you know? Those, I'm fine with that, thanks. Uh, they sent me one about having uh, a check for a bowel cancer, which I've done and came back negative, and so on and so on. The NHS texting system is for our benefit. You don't have to do it. No one's holding a gun to your head. The Matrix isn't saying, if you don't have this, Andrew Tate, we're gonna we're gonna do something to you. Do you have any idea? You're how not in. You, you've not been treated in Romania by their system because of anything to do with COVID vaccines. Do and you, your, your attempt to try and persuade people that that's the case is ridiculous. And you know it's ridiculous. Do you have any idea how difficult it was to remain unvaccinated, Pierce? Let me tell you from somebody who was unvaccinated and travelled the world. Do you have any idea how difficult that was well, actually yes, because to do? countries have border controls. Oh, because they tried to force everybody. Mm. So to sit and say they weren't trying to force. You know what they did? They said, 
come get the COVID vaccine. It's good for you. It's going to help. They tried to coerce you by being nice. They tried to lover boy everybody. Mm. They tried to use the lover boy method to force people to get the COVID vaccine. It just came. To Look, some of my best friends are unvaccinated. Okay. You do you and you make your own decisions. But personally, I think it's pretty fucking weird that everyone's being really weird about it. Some of these things will benefit you. Like I said, being alive itself is harmful to you. If you want to mitigate all harm and never experience it, okay, being alive is harmful. Everything we're doing causes harm. The question is, how is your body impacted by harm differently? My body benefited from having the vaccine, and the booster, and it is something that helped me. And having COVID without those things hurt my body. It gave me long lasting issues and I've been ruined ever since. And I know because I was ruined before I got the vaccine and booster. So for me, it's obvious COVID ruined my lungs versus thinking the vaccine or booster did because I got those after I got sick. I got so sick, I regretted not getting them sooner. So I got them, you know, and I was visiting Europe to see my partner. So I got them for a multitude of reasons. So there is something to be said about like, we're all going to have a different experience, but life itself is default harmful. You can't escape it. In Andrew Tate's world, that would make my life very harmful. It would be harmful to me to have to convert to religion. It would be harmful to me to have to live in a world where Andrew Tate's way was the highway. And that's what I mean to say. You can do whatever you want with your body and your beliefs and everything, right? But your way is not good for everybody. Your way is just good for you. To, we nobody, need to put all these people in jail. Andrew, they were being nice to people, Andrew, trying to help them. Nobody, Unbelievable. Nobody forced you to have it. Did you have the vaccine? Absolutely and utterly not, sir. My principles are not for sale. I would have stayed in my house to the end of human time mm. and sat there as a pure blood, the last one. Oh, the last. A pure blood. Pure blood. Pure blood Andrew, on the planet before Andrew, I inject myself with poison. You're not making an MGM trailer. Yes, I am, because it's a matter of principle. I am not a farm animal. My blood is mine. It does not belong to the government, and I decide. Okay, so he wants agency over his own body, but he wants a world where men are the head of household. I want a world where women get to choose if they want to be the head of household or where we choose there is no head of household. What does that even mean? What is in it? Right. All right, so you have a polio vaccine, but not correct, a COVID one. Correct. So your brilliant brain has determined that you know more about the uh, medicinal and scientific benefits of individual vaccines. And the polio one, you decided with your brilliant brain, well, have that. But even though a lot of people, by the way, have had side effects to polio vaccines, did you know that? Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Is that the matrix doing that? No, I didn't say the matrix. And of course, exactly. Nothing is going to be perfect. It's all going to impact us differently. Literally, that's the consequence to being a person on earth. We don't know if this thing is going to help us or hurt us. We don't know if I eat this food, if it's going to help me or if it's going to hurt me. Right? Just gave him the side effect. Oh. I've just told you all Did he say pure blood? Yes, he's Voldemort. Andrew Tate has become Voldemort. He kind of looks like him. You let him get the vaccine. Right. You've already described it at length. But you work out with your brilliant mind which vaccines to have. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. You realize you that can join my email list on corporatetake.com. You can sign up for free, and I'll tell you which vaccine. Oh wow! Look at him plugging his brand. I, I wouldn't have. come to you for vaccine advice. Why, Andrew? Because I you would. have zero experience. I didn't get. I didn't get the COVID one. Advice. I did. I obviously did pretty good. I avoided the poison shot while everyone else got it. So I'm actually pretty proud of my track record. What happens if you're found guilty of the things you're charged with? Well, then I'm going to have to go to jail, I assume. What's the maximum sentence you could get? I don't know. I yes, you do. I, I actually genuinely don't. You've never asked your lawyers? I've, it, it can be between three to eight years, I right. think. So you do know? I don't know the maximum. But if you sentence. were to serve eight years, having served three months and know how bad that was, yeah. could you cope with that in a Romanian jail? Interesting question. Could I cope with it? Yes. Would I be the same afterwards? I'm not sure. What do you think even the three months did to you as a man? Well, it was a fantastic test from God to make sure I am the man I say I am, because I think there's a lot of people who speak about masculine excellence who are not the men they say they are. When trouble appears, you often learn that they are nothing but postures. I had nightmares for a very long time. I couldn't sleep. I struggled with certain things. I would check my bed sheets every single night for cockroaches religiously. I had a problem with that, but I never turned to therapy. I never turned to drugs. I, I never turned to therapy. I never turned to drugs. Maybe that was your mistake. I understood that all of these things are from God and they're I... given to me. So that These bubbles, bro. 
when you're dating, ask your partner what they think about drugs and therapy and see if they think they're bad, okay? And also, the world needs to start accepting that weed induced psychosis is real and it's happening with the synthetic weed. It's happened to a friend of mine. It's horrible, but it's real. And people need to start accepting it as well. That doesn't mean weed is bad. It means ruining something that was a pure plant and adding synthetic, um, making it synthetic weed, adding things to it, changing it is what's bad, right? We've experimented with something that was natural and from the earth and we've ruined it. And at the same time, sometimes when you do that, it's the best thing we've ever done, like creating vaccines. So again, we need to have a relationship with like what is knowledge, what is reality, right? He pretends to be religious 1,000%. He pretends to be religious. He thinks he's a Muslim. He claims his, he, he converted to Islam. It's insane. It's obviously not real. So again, I want to encourage people to have a relationship with things and understand we're all having different relationships with it. You know, I'm not going to stop. Like if I go to Netherlands, I would absolutely smoke weed because again, like we're all risking a certain level of like harm when we do anything, when we smoke a cigar, when we drive a car, when we do anything. And it's all about you making the decision about what, what's, what, harm are you open to, right? And then what benefits are you open to as well, obviously? Religion is cancer. I mean, I'm not a fan, I'm not a fan of religion, as you guys know, but I think people have the right to ha have like a religious reality. I think it's fine as long as you don't think it should be everyone's goal. And that's my issue is when you think you have the answer for all of us, you make it so now we have to be enemies because now we have to fight each other just so we can live our short time on earth the way we want to. You do you and I do me and leave us alone. If women who like Andrew Tate would just date them and leave the other guys alone, if the guys who want to date women like Andrew Tate dates, just date those women and leave the rest of us alone, the world would be better. But we keep cross-pollinating and dating each other and then blaming each other for being different. And people will always say like, oh, you're never going to be happy this way. You're never going to be happy this way. What they're really saying is like, I would never be happy this way. So there's no way you could be happy this way. And I'm saying lots of people are happy, but whether or not they're joyful is the next part, right? Whether or not they're joyful is the next part. But no obligation to be joyful, even though I do recommend it. That I can become a stronger version of myself, and I welcomed them all, and I embraced them all. And now that I'm a better, not completely, but almost better, part of me actually misses my nightmares, Pierce. Part of me misses training all night. I didn't sleep for weeks, you said You said you didn't have nightmares. No, I had nightmares. I said I didn't have nightmares in jail. When I left, I did. And I kind of miss it because I had so much time in the day to get things done. And now I'm sleeping a full six hours. I feel a little bit lazy. So perhaps I need another test from God. And if God decides, Allah is the best of planners. If he decides- Oh, he said Allah. Jail, he said Allah. Then I will embrace those eight years in jail and do my absolute best to come out as the most formidable version of myself. Have you felt suicidal at all in the last year? I don't believe in suicide, it's haram. I know, you said that before, but- did you feel like you may want to end it all? I would never kill myself under any circumstances. So the day they put that on the news, when they finally take me out, you can know it's a lie. It's haram. I would never kill myself. Lock me in that cell for the rest of my life. I would never kill myself. I believe that. While you're under house- Lots of people go to prison and never kill themselves. I don't think Andrew would do that. Therese, you, you tweeted this. Avoid women- Is this dude manic? I don't know, but he seems unhinged, right? He seems like kind of crazy. I don't know if he is manic. I don't know, but he, he's starting to sound a little bit like Kanye. Festivals. They're either on some loser's table who's feeding them cocaine or in a crowd of sweaty peasants because they're a sweaty peasant. Endless Instagram stories screaming and having fun to prove to the world they're worthless. Hard pass, festy hoes. Correct. I tweeted that, yes. Again, why would you categorize all women who go to festivals in such an unpleasant way? I actually categorized all men who went to festivals also. Did you read that tweet? Why are you gendering the argument? I think all people who go to festivals are stupid. It is peasantry. I've never been to a festival in my life. I'm not <laughs> I've never had fun in my life. <laughs> go to a festival if you want, kids. Festivals are great. Stand there and scream and jump up and down for some other human like he's God. I think the whole thing is embarrassing. All of it from head to toe. It's all sweaty peasantry. And it's Bro has no chill, bro. It's all just drug-fueled insanity. So why are you gendering the argument when I insult the women who go to festivals and also the men who go to festivals because all of it is peasantry head to toe and I do not He's regret at, it. This is such a, this is what I'm saying. If you're still falling for Andrew Tate, I love you so much. Habibis, enjoy your life. Enjoy all your life. festivals are peasantry. Anybody who goes, I do not associate with. I've never been to one in my life. I never will. So if you've never been to one, how do you know what they're like? I can see enough. 
I've seen the sweaty bodies bumping into You've each other. High the sweaty bodies. Ketamin, pretending that the song they heard on the radio at home is now more fantastic because they're listening to. He hates concerts too. Damn. With, from a loud. He seems desperate to be believed. He does seem so desperate. This is the lamest, lamest I've ever seen Andrew Tate. I get it. But just it's to be, embarrassing. But to be clear, you've never been to one. Correct. My infinite brain that understands vaccines no, no, perfectly we've also understands. You have, we have established your brain is unique. Correct. Uh, this is you, so embarrassing. You tweeted the picture of Amanda Holden, a very good friend of mine. Uh, it's a very harmless picture. She's in a bikini on holiday under a rain shower, uh, looking extraordinarily uh, beautiful. In a sexual pose. And you tweeted, you are a wife and a mother and you're far past a teenager. There's no need for this post. Agreed. You're far past a teenager? Again, it's just misogynist to say that. It's not misogynist. Why can't a woman of her age, she's just turned 50, why can't a woman of that age actually show off her beautiful body in a, in a nice bikini like that? What's you, wrong with that? You can call me crazy. You can call me misogynistic. But I think once you reach the ripe age of 50, any woman should not be interested in thirst trapping on Instagram. I think she has bigger responsibilities. I'm sure she's a very intelligent lady. And she's I mean... <clears throat> I think some people would feel like that a lot of people might feel this way. I plan to thirst trap until I'm uh, dead. I might even thirst trap at my funeral, y'all. I might do it. <laughs> an amazing thing. She's famous. She's obviously very capable. And I think she could do things more interesting. Who's the interviewer? This is Piers Morgan. Standing around trying to thirst trap on Instagram like she's 18. Because the last I think she's above it. I wasn't insulting her. I was reminding her that mm. she's actually such a fantastic person. She's done such His a- His teeth are wild. When did he get them done? They look so dumb. Amazing things in her life and she's so achieved that she's actually above thirst trapping. I was reminding her of her worth mm. because as a feminist, we're all feminists here, right? We all believe in women empowerment. I'm reminding of her, her of her worth. Are you a feminist? Uh, sure. Well, you're not though, are you? I believe in feminine empowerment and I think feminine empowerment is in- Yes, I do. And feminine empowerment only is in only, modesty. Modesty is empowering for, fem for females. You only believe in- Taking your clothes off for men on Instagram is not empowering. You it's actually, empowering when you say no man but my husband can see my body. That actually, I would agree that taking off your clothes for the benefit of men is not empowering. I think you should take your clothes off for the benefit of being like having a philosophy around uh, how the human body is valuable and it is allowed to be sexual without being objectified in a negative way. And we can have a healthy relationship with it. I do kind of think taking off your clothes for the benefit of men, even if it makes you feel bad, is bad and anti-feminist. But I do think taking off your clothes in general is neutral. Like nudity is neutral unless you, in the context, put an energy or a vibe to it, of course. So I kind of agree that like, Getting naked so men will like you is anti-feminist, but getting naked because you want to is feminist. That is female empowerment. Mm. And I was reminding her of that. I was reminding her of her ripe age and her intellect. And there was no need for that. How post. old are you now? I am 36. 36 years oh old. Oh my God, he's a baby. Andrew Tate is only a couple years older than me. He looks so old. <laughs> he looks so old. He's two years older than me. Why does he literally look so old? What? I thought he was literally 10 years older than me at least. We're babies. What is he doing? What? That's so interesting. Cringe. But also, he's 36, lecturing a woman in her 50s. I'm pretty sure she knows what she's doing. Thanks, bro. Nothing. Independence has nothing wrong with taking it. For a man, too, if you do it with your own agency, autonomy, and if you are sex positive, you uh, have to agree with this take. Um, I don't think you should do anything for people. <laughs> I, I, yeah, unless that person is special. I do think if you are taking off your clothes for randos on the internet, you're cringe as fuck. I do. I think you are not having a healthy. That's why people don't have a healthy relationship with sex work because they're doing it for the randos. You should be doing it for you because you like being there regardless if the randos are there. And if you turn it into a job, that's great. But I do think taking off your clothes on Instagram for a username you don't know, you need therapy. I do think that unless you are saying for my own satisfaction as an exhibitionist, I'm going to take off my clothes, which see how that makes it about you again. 
You know what I mean? You know how that makes it about you again? Again, it's the why you're taking off your clothes. Why are you taking off your clothes? It's not that you're taking off your clothes. You know, you know, anti-sex work, trash, sex, negative take. Wrong. I am a sex worker and you're wrong. Like, I think the why matters. And if you take it off because your self-esteem is so low and you're dying for a random username to validate you, I think you need therapy. What point will your antics, you know, chugging your cigars and your ripped body in your compound with your security and your Bugattis. At what age does that become a thirst trap? I don't know if that ever stops being a thirst trap. Because so it's fine for you. Once again, one rule for the man, another rule for the woman. Well, it's interesting because I've never heard this argument before, but I'm extremely intelligent. I've already deciphered how this is going to go from head to toe. It's called, I guess we can look at peacocks, right? The male peacock, he shows, look who I am. Look, well, look what I can do. Look at my mm. achievement. Look at my beautiful feathers. And I guess you could call it peacocking to a degree. I'm showing the so world. You I'm showing, extremely, you I'm showing extremely your... physical capable. I'm extremely physically capable. Yes, that's correct. I'm extremely financially successful. But you yes, stripping off for Instagram is fine. It's not stripping off but for Instagram. You I'm do, boxing. You, you do, box, you box, no, no, you have no you top do, on. You do it all the time with your cigar and you're showing off your rip butt. That, you box shirtless, you go to the beach in a bikini. That's fine for you, but if Amanda Holden dares do it, that is apparently thirst trapping. I think me boxing with no shirt on is different than a 50-year-old woman posting. You don't just box. I've seen you doing ones where you wander around all moody with your cigar and your top. <laughs> topless and stuff. So fine for you. Are you a fan, Piers? Uh, no, I just think it's thirst trap. Do you? Yeah. Well, I don't do that. Perhaps it's successful. You, maybe you should start. But perhaps mm -hmm. it's successful because I do have a lot of female fans out there in the world. And they pretend I'm a misogynist, but it turns out that 85% of women on the planet seem to agree with me. Every single woman I've ever... What's wrong to express your sexuality if a woman likes it? What is that? That has nothing to do with the argument you were making. I think you should express your sexuality if you want to. If you want to because it's about you and for you. That's different than what you were saying and what Andrew was saying. Right. I think there is nothing wrong with any sexual expression or sex positivity. If a woman wants it again, I am extremely sex positive. So my positions is extremely against red femmes and sex negative feminists. No, no, no. I'm extremely sex positive. You are either not listening to what I'm saying or we're talking about different things. A woman is not sex positive if she literally is dependent on a man's approval of her. So she dresses sexy and takes off her clothes for the man's approval. That is not sex positivity. If you're looking for a man's approval, using your sexuality, that is not sex positivity. That is not sex positivity. You must know the difference. Sex positivity is about the consciousness having a relationship with their sex positivity. The why is what makes it healthy or unhealthy. Literally. If you have a teenager who's like coming into puberty like I did and I'm expressing my like like me coming into my body and feeling good about it and I'm just doing it for me and then and then that's one thing. But if I'm like doing it for the approval of some older man, there's something in that that's natural but also incredibly unhealthy because I'm doing it for a person that I shouldn't even be engaging with. Not everything done in sex is positive, right? It's about why you're doing it. What's the relationship? If a woman only goes and works out so men will like her, if a man only works out so women will like her, that is an unhealthy reason to work out. I've ever met in real life agrees with me. I have no female hate at all. I've never had a neg negative interaction with women ever. Yes, you have. With who? Well, what about the BBC journalist that came to your compound? <laughs> Lucy. Yes. Uh, I've never I had a negative she, interaction with a female I ever. don't think she was a fan. So that's also like crazy. I think we've all had bad interactions with men or women, right? Like any normal person in a lifetime has had a bad interaction with a man or a woman if you socialize. So when people say like, I've never had a bad moment with a man or a woman, I'm sorry, do you never leave the house? I think she was. I would categorize that as a negative interaction. Well, she seemed to follow me around for a long time. I think she was a little bit There obsessed. are lots of women, Andrew. There are lots of women I know Personally, there are lots of women who find you incredibly offensive. I don't think so. Right? He's They're not offensive. He's disgusting. You're right to. You're right course, to. Of course. Of course. Like, I'm not offended about Andrew Tate. I'm, like, disgusted by him. Like, I never want to touch a man again except my husband. But, like, I never, ew. Like, men are disgusting to me if I think they're all like Andrew Tate. But I know they're not, so right to not care yep. but the idea that somehow you're this beloved person for the world's females i think is uh, not true you are for a certain type of woman who likes to be treated in the way that you like to treat women 
Well, let's counter that argument, right? Because the world, as I said at the beginning. I still can't get over how Trumpy this is. It's uncanny. Girl, I'm telling you, he's taking the Trump playbook and he's using it. You know, technically, Andrew Tate, couldn't he, isn't he an American? Right? So can he technically like run for president? Or no, did he give up his like, did he give up, hmm, did he give up his passport? I don't remember. Hmm. I definitely work out to look better for my partner. Not sure if that fits the same idea. Um, do you only work out to look good for your partner? Like, do you also do it for your health and to look? Because I look, I want to look good for my partner too, but I primarily look good for myself. But I'm also lucky that the way I feel good about myself is the way that my partner finds me attractive. And I also like, I lift weights. I like, you know, I'm trying to get mommy muscles here. So I would say that obviously you want to groom for your partner in the same way you groom for yourself. But see, Again, the why is what matters. The why is like what matters. Is it a part of your lifestyle or do you do it even though you don't want to? Are you doing it against your own consent? You know what I mean? Are you having a healthy un or an unhealthy relationship with it? You know what I mean? Cass says, Brittany, I never leave the house. Still get the occasional bad interaction. I mean, humans gonna, we're all just, humans gonna, human, we're all interacting. You know, I hate people that are like, I've never had a bad interaction with X group. I'm like, well, then you've never like socialized. Okay. Hello. Uh, Independence says, I am talking about grown adults, but yeah, I understand the point you're trying to make. What what you are trying to say is basically self-expression for yourself instead of validation of others. Yes. I worked, uh, I work out for both health benefits, stress relief, and better looks. Working out in general is good for both physical and mental health. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree. Is nuanced. Am I beloved by all females? No. But when I'm sat here with someone as prestigious as you who says you're a misogynist and you hate women and women hate I you. I think you talk in a way that... Why don't I like his teeth? Can you not tell that he, he has different teeth or something is wrong with them? They, they're they like the veneer things. I hate that shit. Is misogynist. It almost never looks good. Yeah. Okay, well then you make it sound like all women hate me and that's also not the case. Of course, it's a nuanced I argument. I didn't say all women hate you. Some, some women agree with me. Mm. Some women don't agree with me. When I said that post about Amanda Holden, a lot of women said, Andrew, that's actually completely correct. She's extremely famous and there's no need for her to be posting video pictures like this at her ripe age. Yes, and those women live in those bubbles with those values. So, so? I was actually empowering her. I believe that female empowerment is in modesty. But you don't actually believe in feminism. I believe in the idea you of- You believe in masculinity controlling women. No. They have to take instructions from you. If you believe in men should be the head of household, you don't believe in feminism. The health, and by the way, I'm not even a political feminist, right? Like I don't, like I don't think Anything benefits all people. Feminism isn't going to benefit all women in the same way, though it's benefited a lot of women in a lot of ways, obviously. And I'm a feminist at heart. But ultimately, I want the world just to work for people regardless of gender. Gender should not be the priority. We should not look at the world through gender. Gender is only necessary in specific cultural instances, and it's never going to be mine. Like, Or it's only going to matter when I'm like maybe, I don't know, I feel like my sex matters a lot more than my gender does. But like, again, you know, what does that mean? So I just, for me, I'm always frustrated when they're like, men should do this and women should do this. And I'm like, how about just people do people? Okay. Like, hello. Um, and says the health stuff makes me feel, makes it feel, uh, 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 the health stuff makes it feel better, but I know I wouldn't do it if it wasn't for him. If that makes sense. Wouldn't do it if I absolutely hated it too. Okay. Then that's fair. We all do things um, for people. I can't think of something I would do. Oh, no. I'll give you an example. I try really hard not to slam things in the house because my partner doesn't love loud noises. Is that the same thing? I try really hard to be quieter because I'm a very loud person. So it is like I'm happy to be like a little slower when I slam cabinets. Otherwise, my reflex is to be like, Foom! Foom! when I shut doors, Foom! <laughs> Is that the same thing? You work out, I try not to make loud noises. <laughs> they have to do what you tell them, and that is actually what love and relationships are about. No, I believe that men and women have different roles. I believe that we were created differently by God because we are the perfect team. Mm. I believe that a man who's in his masculine frame is best suited by a woman who's in her feminine frame. I believe when we work- mm. Ooh, let's examine that. Men who are in their masculine frame are best, what would he say, complimented? What do you say? frame is best suited by a woman who's in her is best suited by a woman who's in her feminine frame 
you know me, I think couples should be kind of match and go together. So yeah, I could see that. I could see a masculine frame being more cohesive and working together better with a feminine frame. I could see that. Um, I think we would all describe masculine differently and how that works out because again, some uh, I know some feminine women who are with like kind of what I would say is more like less masculine men but more masculine men than less feminine. And then I would say like the bisexual, pansexual girlies who marry men don't marry hyper-masculine men because they're unattractive to them. They marry men who are more in their feminine. And then I would say like, I could never date a Tate. I'm just not attracted to hyper-masculinity at all. Like I'm the closest I get to being attracted here, I'll show you. The closest I get to being attracted to hyper-masculinity is somebody that a lot of people would say isn't even that masculine, even though he has muscles. And again, like he's not even my type. We wouldn't even match as a couple. Like I would not put him with me as um, a partner. Like it wouldn't make sense. I just wouldn't know what to do. This is Chris Heria. I love him. Like He's so handsome and he does catasthetics and I love that. But like also we don't match aesthetically. Like he's too masculine, but this is as close as I get to being into masculine men. So this is as close as I get into being in, into masculine men. This is a, f but see, a lot of people would say he's very feminine. But this is as close as I get. Otherwise, like, and also obviously I have the goal of doing this as well, like working out and stuff. So <laughs> I also watch him for that. But yeah, for me, like this is as close as I get to masculine. But he's very like, some people think he's like feminine, I guess. I don't know. It just depends on what you like describe as like feminine or masculine. But yeah, this is like as close as I get. Otherwise, I like very, I prefer more like gamer boys. You know what I mean? Okay, let's keep going. Feminine frame. I believe when we work together, we can achieve amazing things, whether it's raising children or preserving society. And I believe a man has certain jobs and a woman has certain jobs. You don't understand this about the things I say. When I said there that women make bad decisions in the tweet you referenced earlier, mm. the point I was making is that women are more emotional than men. That is their superpower. That is fantastic. That is a great thing. I love female emotionality. In the tweet before you tried to use against me, I was talking about how I love a woman to be happy all the time, smiling all the time while I'm stressed. I love female emotionality. The reason women are better no, with no, children, the not, reason women are better with children is because they're emotional. Not what that is their superpower. That's not what, but that's not what your position, tweet said. In a position- You're not of, even remembering what you of wrote. Of course it is. Yeah. I said female women are more emotional than men is exactly what I said. I'm saying that is a fantastic thing, mm. but there is no light without dark. So in certain situations, the emotionality is positive. In certain situations, the emotionality is negative. We can also argue the same for men because what happens with me is everyone tries to gender my arguments. We can actually argue the same with men. Stoicism, male stoicism is positive in certain scenarios. It can be negative in others. Verveke just did a video about stoicism because everyone on the internet gets it so wrong about what stoicism is. So I really like recommend it. I just started it, so I haven't finished it, but of course it's great. It can come across as unempathetic or not care because we're stoic. I mean, I know but in people, certain situations, it benefits I know us. people who've told me that their kids who are in their late teens. They're at schools where the name Andrew Tate is banned. Nobody's allowed to mention your name because sure. the teachers think that your brand of masculinity is so toxic, they are seeing a immediate effect on the way that young men behave and not in a good way. Is that what the teachers think? Is yeah. Well, I am actually genuinely concerned by the fact that I've been banned from schools when I do nothing but preach masculine strength and excellence. But then if you actually understand how the society is going and how the world works and all the insanity they're trying to push on all of us, I can understand why they banned me because I speak the truth. If I was wearing a wig, Piers, mm. and lipstick and telling young boys to remove their genitals, would I have been banned from schools? Oh my God. <laughs> <sighs> no. They would have said, no, you can say his name, no problem. No matter how big I got, if I had a wig on and lipstick and I had been castrated medically, I would be allowed to talk to the young boys. But as soon as I say, you're supposed to grow up and get big and strong, and if your wife doesn't want a job, you need to pay for it. Okay, The Rock is well-loved and everybody loves him. Arnold Schwarzenegger has a place in culture. Um, 
I think The Rock is probably the best example. Disney did a movie with him. The Rock is hyper masculine. The Rock is also a girl dad. He does like makeup with his girls and lets the girls like paint on his face. The Rock is generally accepted by society. Any school would love it if The Rock came to visit them. Masculine men are not the issue. It's just you, Andrew. You're just unlikable and you're trash. Like The Rock is literally a very masculine man. He's like girls love him. Women like The Rock. He has a good relationship with women in his life. Okay, it's not masculine men. It's you. It's your job as a man. You better find some money. That I'm the public enemy number one. Garbage. On that last point, you don't say if a woman doesn't want to work, a man should take care of it. You say a woman shouldn't work. I say my woman won't work. Right. I'm talking about my personal experience. I said any girlfriend of mine, because I'm an extremely fortunate financial position. I was before Romania took everything, of course. So now he's poor. So now he's claiming he's dirt poor and has no money. I have hundreds of millions of dollars. So because I am in my position, I would not my, want my woman to work. I think there's more important things she can do. If you have hundreds money. of millions of dollars, where you said you had a worth of 17 million. Where's no, I the, said they took 17 million. Years. So where's the rest? Uh, they must have taken it. I think they have it. Or maybe I lost it. I think I lost it somewhere. You, you... What just happened? What just happened? Um, what just happened? <laughs> Where you said you had a worth of 17 million. Where's no, I the, said they took 17 million. Years. So where's the rest? Uh, they must have taken it. I think they have it. Or maybe I lost it. I think I lost it somewhere. You, you've never had hundreds of millions of dollars. Of course not. You haven't, have you? Of course not. You said they took all your assets. Exactly. Well, did they or didn't they? Of course, they took everything. I mean, they'll be watching this. Are they to assume that there are hundreds of millions more dollars they haven't got yet? Well, they're they watching go this. That's right. They take absolutely everything. You have it all. Right. But again... Um... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And is that all just the smoke and mirrors? Is that all just the... Look at this fucking smug... The top G stuff that you play up to, which is that has no bearing on reality. I was the most Googled man on the planet. I was the most relevant man mm. amongst 18 to 35 mm. year old males, which are the highest earning and spending people on the planet. Mm. Do you really think that I am not, I can't pay my bills, Pierce? Right now. So first he says he broke, and then he says I can pay my bills, and then he says he broke and he can pay his bills, and oh, they took $17 million. They took all my money, oh, only $17 million. Oh, yeah. Someone's paying them for you. Correct, you're right. Someone's paying them for me, you're right. My girl's got a job. She works at Starbucks. Mm. Exclusive! Obviously, he's trolling, right? How interesting. Andrew Tate's girl, Top G's girl, works in Starbucks to pay the rent. I've been exposed. There's a part two to this interview about Palestine and Israel, which we're absolutely not watching. Thank See, you. See, again, I don't know what to believe when you say stuff like that. Well, I'm telling you, my friend. That the Romanian state I think you deployed all... deliberate smoke and mirrors because you think it plays up to the brand. The Romanian state have taken all of my money and I'm just, you know, getting by. Mm -hmm. That's what's happened. Do you worry about your impact on young men? I think that... Because, I have... I, like I said, I'll be completely honest. I think a lot of what you say, they should be hearing. Yep. And I, I have tangible proof every day when I walk around... Yep. That they are listening to everything you I can't tell. Is he mentally unwell? Is he manic? Is he unhinged? Or is this like a game? Or is the game trying to look mentally unwell? Is that the game? So, yep. But there is other stuff you say where I don't want my sons, <laughs> especially in that impressionable late teenage, mm. to be listening to that. Correct. And that's a very. And I don't want my daughter to grow up and think that actually her only success in life will come if she's at home as some kind of servant to her man. Well, that won't be her only success, but that's an actual, that's a very professional question, and I'll give a very professional answer. I have a massive responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility, and I understand that young men do listen to everything I say. I do think I say good things, but you also made a very pertinent point there. You talked about the impressionable age of a teenager, and it's very easy for a teenager with their hormones and their lack of life experience to take the things I say and weaponize them and use them in the incorrect context. However, that is not my fault. You could argue that 16, 17 year olds can look at anything on the internet and misunderstand it. You could argue that all of this transgender garbage and all of these rappers- Oh, see, I can't promote an anti-transphobe. See, that's not what's gonna happen. That's what I mean. 
let people be trans, let people be gay, let people live their life. You be you and I'll be me. But until you can do that, then you create an enemy. Fine. Fine. But like, why have we got to be in competition like this, Andrew Tate? Why? Is talking about killing each other and all these drill artists talking about stabbing their enemies mm. could be misunderstood by a 16 year old. I agree. Enemies. So oh, no, that's not my that, fault. However, on that, I totally agree. Okay, so I have a massive responsibility. And you are held to a different account, actually, to a lot of those rappers. Absolutely. Right? There's no question. I mean, the farce for me was when John Legend rewrote the lyrics to Baby It's Cold Outside because it apparently encouraged sexual assault, but wouldn't say a negative word about any of the disgustingly misogynist. And, and actually very violent lyrics of his rap friends. Absolutely. That to me is total hypocrisy. And it is hip hypocritical. However, unlike all of these other people, I have taken into account my massive power and my massive responsibility. And I try to make sure that I use my words as carefully as possible so that they cannot be misconstrued or misunderstood. Can I make sure that no teenager on the planet who listens to me ever misunderstands me ever? No, I can't do that, but I'm doing my very best. What do I actually talk about? What do I actually say? I what Oh, I wait, miss. <laughs> <laughs> Quotes, I can't promote an anti-transphobe. Wow, where did our alley queen go? You know what I mean. Wait, no. <laughs> Wait. Ingrid goes, an anti-transphobe. Isn't that what you are? No, stop. <laughs> you know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> I can't promote a transphobe. Fuck. What I do is I come along and let me give you the broad overview of my message. You're a man, so your life sucks. It's always going to suck, and it's going to be pain. You're going to do nothing but suffer. You're going to suffer as a nobody, or you're going to suffer the pain it takes to become Actually, right. most men don't have that. But that you're going to suffer as a nobody, because trust me, nobody suffer. Or you're going to suffer the pain it takes to become great. Life is not supposed to be a happy picnic. You're supposed to get up, work hard. Life always will have an element of sacrifice, and it will be harmful. But you can mitigate that harm. You can have a joyful life. You can have a great life. You don't have to be famous. You don't have to be very rich. You can just live a normal, basic, average, lovely life. And you can be happy and joyful and have love around you and friends and family and places to go on a Friday night. Like you can have the most amazing life if you would just let go of this narrative that you have to be something to be worthy of someone. And by someone, I mean like love, but love from yourself, right? Like Andrew Tate and men like Andrew Tate, they really think they don't deserve love unless they produce something. And I think you deserve love if you have a good character and you're kind to people. The love will come to you because you have loved yourself. Loving yourself really does encourage people to like love you because they see the goodness of your character. I don't think Andrew Tate loves himself enough, right? He loves himself in a narcissistic way, which is not the same, just like Trump. But they don't love themselves enough to have good character. I really think there's a version of love where you love yourself, almost like agape, I guess, where it is so like the love of Christ or the love of God, in which it is like unconditional and beautiful elicits a good character from you but when you love in like that emo codependent way when you love in a way that's narcissistic like trump you do hurt the people around you whether you intend it or not whether you intend it or not whether trump intended it or not his kids are risking federal prison because he asked them to lie for him whether you like it or not when you have a child and you abuse that child right when you put your child in a situation where they are you know in a very immoral conundrum okay you've put them in you've put them there Andrew Tate has put himself there and I think it reflects in their bad character Andrew Tate curated this bubble made it loved it wanted it and now it's not working out for him in the same way okay but like Trump and Tate are very similar and I think it shows in how they treat the people around them you know if they only love you because you're standing up for them, no matter how much bad they do, they don't love themselves enough to like have good enough character to not let you go down with them. Ex example, ride or die to me, my husband and I love each other and he loves me enough not to force me into a situation where I would ever have to bury a body for him or break the law or go to prison. We are not going to put ourselves into positions, right? On purpose with malicious intent to ever risk our safety and sanity in regards to the law. But Trump did that and Andrew Tate did that. They both broke insane laws 
that will now bring down the people around them, their kids or family members or friends, and they will put them in a situation where they will go down basically for their crimes. Or they'll say like, or they did the crimes, but on behalf of that person. Like love people enough, hello, not to let them face federal prison. Thank you. Brittany, do you take tea recommendations? Um, yes. Podcast request for unconditional love agape and how to have a healthy relationship with it. Noted, write it down. Dedicate yourself, get strong, get rich, go through whatever it takes to become somebody of significance. That's my overall message you don't have to and get, I believe you have to, it's a positive. You haven't got to get rich to be happy. No, most of that, In fact, most of the super rich people I know in life are incredibly unhappy. Really? So you're selling a kind of full string. Well, I don't- A lot of rich people are miserable. Have you ever seen a rich person give their money away? And a lot of people away? who have very little money can be True. very happy. Have you ever seen a rich person give their money away? Yes, of course. Okay, do you give all your money away? Will that make you happier, Piers? I don't Do you want the Romanian state to take it all? I didn't smile that day. And let me tell you that the reason I tell about men to become financially successful is for two reasons. One, because you have a job as a man to protect and provide, and you can do neither of those things if you are broke. That's the first reason. And the second reason I actually preach to young men to become as financially successful as possible is a greater, broader reason. And I believe we've entered a very interesting stage in humanity where the matrix has finally cracked. Three or four years ago, there were certain narratives you could not talk against, but with Elon Musk owning X, and now we have Rumble, we have a lot more information on the internet, people are starting to tell the truth about many different subjects. There's a whole bunch of them we can name. And I like the idea of people who are free thinking with a free mind, who are say, not matrix controlled, yeah, hang on. making as much money as possible because it takes money to win wars, and I want these people to be financially successful. Right. When That's you why I tell all of my fans who believe in me to become as rich as possible because they understand that everything that the government does is lie to them. Fine. We need finance. You use the word truth there. I don't think it's necessarily that people want to promote truth. They want to promote their opinions. Often mm. people's opinions on facts can be very different. People can take the same set of facts and different opinions. Same breakfast. I don't really love Piers Morgan most of the time, but he's killing it in this interview. He's really asking him hard questions. Opinions. Doesn't mean Unlike Candace Owens. Ugh. It's the truth. Right. Well, that's true. But I, mean, I, I don't believe in this my truth crap. Right. Neither, neither do I. But uh, can... there are facts which have to be accepted. Then you can have an opinion about them. You and I can disagree about all sorts of opinions, but actually not facts. OK, but I can argue this point where the Matrix comes out with a fact and all the opinions countering that fact are censored and they are destroyed, then that fact becomes de facto truth because it's the only version of reality which exists you think, to be ingested by the mind. I, so you still need varying you, opinions on all public. Do all you all think that what you, uh, let's, let's put it this way. Sure. You would have relationships with women and encourage them to take part in webcam sexual stuff. No. Well, actually, yeah. Is he saying he never did webcam? Is he literally pretending he never did webcam business? Okay, I'm dying to see what Piers does right here. I just want someone to hold Andrew's feet to the fire and confirm. Are you saying you only ever did TikToks? Because that's another narrative spin he's been doing where he's been trying to convince people he only ever did TikToks, even though you and I know he made his money off camming. So, yes. Why are we going back to this? Because there's one question I want to ask you sure. about it, right? And both sides made a lot of money, sure. right? Okay. And in most cases, because they haven't complained in most cases, you would assume it was a mutually beneficial transactional relationship, right? I can assume that because thousands of women have been through this and most of them haven't come forward and complained about the way they were treated. It was transactional. But was it moral? Do you think what you've been making money from, park the illegality aspect to one side, do you feel it was moral? Ten years ago, I helped women promote their profiles on the internet. Correct. Ten years ago. Mm. Firstly, I have not been involved with it for seven years. It's not how I make money. I haven't touched it for a very long time. Seven years is a but long time. you made a lot time. of money from it. I made some money from it right. a long time how ago. How much? Some money. I can't even remember. Millions? Mm. Millions. Perhaps. Millions. You made millions. <laughs> Perhaps, you know, earlier in this interview, I didn't show it to you guys, but he says he has a partner and he says he has kids and Piers Morgan goes, how many kids do you have? And he goes, no, that's confidential. And he goes, why is it confidential? And he goes, because I'm the most hated man in the world. Like people might want to hurt my kids, which technically is true. Rich people got to protect their kids. But the way he dodges questions. Millions of pounds. A long time ago. Well, hang on. It's important. You made millions of pounds from sexual webcam activity where you and the woman doing the webcams would make money. You accept that. And Andrew Tate would text the customers. So, pretending to be the girls. Oh, what I did is- Well, this, what, this is how you made money. No, a long time ago, and I talked about this at length on many- See how he's twisting the story? 
podcast. Yeah, yeah. I don't hide it. I said a long time ago, 10 years ago, I helped women with the tax side and the technical side and the promotion of well, their they profiles. Or the promotion of their profiles on certain websites. And I said about this, and I said, I haven't been involved with it for seven years. The only reason this is even coming up again is because I'm monumentally famous, because nobody cares. We're in Booker. Well, no, it's Let not. Let me even Pierce. It's We're not. in Booker Rest for it... Romania. Do you understand that there is a video chat studio with mm. girls talking to men online right there, mm. outside that window? I'm sure. In fact, there's about 10 or 15,000 asking... women in this city who do that job the fact that you... now. And the fact that I have. As far as I know, it was true that Andrew Tate was sending the messages because he would run the girls' accounts after hours according to his program that he sold to men. So according to the program that he sold men, in the program he said, you need to send messages when the girls are asleep, have the girl on 24-7, send the text messages yourself. He said in the program, from my remembrance, from my memory, that he was running a sex business, that this is how he ran it. And that's why him denying it now is so funny to me. You know, that's why it's funny because according to the footage that we saw from many years ago, he was running their accounts. He wasn't doing the messages for people. And then eventually he delegated that work to somebody else. Andrew. Some Allegedly. I dipped my toe in it 10 years ago. I dipped my toe in it. I barely did it. I was hardly even a part of it, bro. How do, how does anyone believe this man? How does anyone believe this man? He can't even own up to it. Isn't even significant. I'm only asking if you think it's moral. Do I think it's moral? Because you speak in such a morally self-righteous way now. Do you think that that was moral? Well, I wasn't religious back then, but let me sit and out. Because you're now, you, you converted no, to I'm, Islam. Yeah, correct. You're a Muslim. Correct. They have, you know, a code of, of behavior. Do you think that that fell short of I that? I have code? to answer as a professional. And as a professional, I would say, do, judging by my current code, no, I do not think that women being naked on the internet is moral. However. It is absolutely immoral to sign up for my OF. There is like, So you made money immorally. You can admit that. It's nuanced like all things. This is what I don't like about people. I don't trust you. If you cannot admit your health, your relationship is unhealthy or that life is imperfect or relationships aren't great or that you sex trafficked women. Just kidding. That one's a little okay. Or that you did do porn or that you did do. That's what I mean. People who can't admit something wasn't perfect or a parent who can't admit that they weren't a perfect parent. Like, I'm just like, I, you're fucking not new. Like, you're not introspective, my bros. Like, I need people in my life who would say, oh, yeah, I fucked up hardcore or man, oh, I used to do that back in the day. Definitely wouldn't recommend it now. I can see why I made those decisions when I was outside of religion. But the Andrew Tate that I am now as a Muslim, I would never engage in that behavior now. It is haram. And I don't want to do that. I want, you know, I want to be respectful to my life now. You know what I mean? Like, I can't handle people. Genuinely, I love everybody so much. But people that are just like, and look, I try to help everybody. Look, okay. A homie, like I've known men who have come up to me. Men will be like, hey, Brittany, I need your opinion on this. I'm like, what's up? They're like, I'm dating this girl. I really like her. I met her on the internet. And I go, stop, get her age, get her ID. And he goes, what do you mean? I was like, get her ID. Where'd you meet her? Oh, I met her gaming. I met her on Tinder. I met her on these websites. I was like, cool, get her ID before you send nudes, before you do text, sex messages. And they're like, why? And I was like, what if she's a 17 year old pretending to be 18? And he goes, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. They're 18. The men will be like, no, no, don't worry about it. The girl's 18, 19, really young. And I'm like, so you're in your almost 30s. And these girls that you're dating are 18 and 19. And first of all, you don't think that's a red flag. And second of all, you don't think to check their age. Like you're not even smart enough to think that a minor might be like lying about their age, which by the way, congratulations, it's happened. And I will tell them and they'll go, I don't need to know. I trust her. I'm, I'm in love right now. I'm doing a thing right now. And I'm like, okay. It's like they don't want to know. So that way, if they find out it wasn't their fault and they got to enjoy it for a time or, oh, I didn't find out she was um, underage until later, but like she's 18 now. So it doesn't matter. You don't think it matters? Like that's that's what I'm saying. Like you do you nuance bubbles, all of that. But I'm saying it tells me something about your character or about like how you view people or how you rationalize bad behavior, or rationalize what I view as bad behavior, right? If you are engaging with people who are basically newly 18, like, okay, and again, I get it, like, you're human, I'm not saying you're evil, but I'm just thinking about, like, the situations I've been in, and I'm like, why, like, <laughs> well, and first of all, you continue engaging with someone who's lied. That's what's even funnier. You continue engaging with somebody who's lied to you. 
Are we not going to say this is unhealthy? Belle Delphine putting her minor face on adult bodies that were not hers was unhealthy and unethical. And even though I like Belle now, Belle did a very bad thing. She did a very, very bad thing. And people should maybe distrust a version of herself that may or may not exist anymore because I don't know her personally, right? But that's what the issue is is that Andrew Tate is untrust, he's not trustworthy. He's lying to you. He's lying during this interview. He's dodging answers and questions. He's being a Trump. And what is Trump? Trump is on stand right now facing federal prison. And whether or not the system finds them guilty or not, the point is, is that this should be enough for you to judge their character. Things, Pierce. At the time I was atheistic, I know that some of my girls talked men away from suicide. A lot of men are ridiculous. Some of my girls. Some of my girls. I also say a lot of the lessons I know about men and how they think and how lonely and sad they can be and how difficult life is as a man actually came from that era because I saw a lot of very successful men with a wife and with kids and with money mm. pouring their heart out to some 20 year old they never sure. met about how sad they were. I learned a lot about the world and I know that a lot of suicide was prevented and I made a lot of women millionaires. But I hate, I hate people. I really, this is why I love living in my little seclusion bubble. Just admit you fucked up. Jesus fucking Christ, why do you have to justify it? Why you got to beautify something that was ugly? Can't you just say it was haram and it was ugly? I was beautiful. Look how this thing was like beautiful though. And I'm like, I just say it was shitty and I wish it could have been better, but it was what it was. Yeah, it was destructive. It was toxic. It wasn't great. I, you know, I'm proud of some of the things that we did that were good. I'm proud that some men had a, a better, you know, whatever. But like, you're doing this thing again. You're doing this thing again that drives me nuts in people, which is just like, you can't engage with the, you want to be stoic? You want to engage with reality? Then say out loud, I did something that was immoral. I wouldn't have done it again. It wasn't perfect, but it also wasn't all bad. And I can see why people who are secular engage in sex work because there's a part of it that's really beneficial to people. But would I do it now? No. However, I'm in a very different situation now. I'm a different person. I'm religious. I'm also extremely financially successful. Yes, in confu uh, confusion, Andrew is expo ex exploiting exactly these lonely men he talks about, in my opinion. Exactly. The audio is very low on the video. It's it's turned up on both the OBS and the YouTube video. For some reason, Piers Morgan's show did a really shitty job of their audio because even on Papa Gut's channel, same thing. The audio was really low. We I can't get it any louder. It is what it is. And I'm not going to put extensions on my browser to make it louder. Sorry. Please understand, Piers. I come from Marsh Farm Luton. I came from one of the worst areas inside of the UK. Mm. I could have stabbed someone. He came from poverty because his dad ditched them and was not a father figure to go be a professional chess guy. And he ditched his wife and ditched his children. The reason Andrew, one of the contributing factors to Andrew growing up in poverty was that he has a single mother household. And it's very difficult as a single parent to make it work for your children because, you know, there is a challenge there. That's because his father ditched them. He talks very highly of his father and says his father was a very good person. He was known as a very famous chess player. But his father ditched his family and his responsibilities. Every one of my friends were breaking into cars, breaking into houses. Most of my friends were in jail. What did I do? I promoted accounts on the internet. You didn't made sell, money. Didn't you... sell crack, didn't sell no. drugs, didn't rob anyone, didn't shoot anyone. And now, because I am successful, I'm going to be held to this moral standard by people who grew up in fancy homes with white picket fences and went to private schools. Well, no, actually. You... I am from Marsh no, Farm no, no, Luton, no. and the biggest crime I committed was completely legally promoting internet profiles. Right. There are people around See, me who did not engaging in cam work, which he was doing, not engaging in sex work, right? He's not, he's, he's pretending he was never a sex worker. Andrew Tate was absolutely a sex worker by his own admittance years ago, but he won't admit it now because it's not good for the grift. So you're only going to be held for far less. No, no, you're only going to be held to the standard of the religion you converted to, which you've already when you said, take the shahada, well, all on, your former fins which you've are already erased. said would look at that as immoral. When you take the shahada, all of your former sins are erased, and I actually encourage you to find the light and convert to Islam. Andrew Tate, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Wow, that was freaking, Piers Morgan did great because that was very, oh, he's so frustrating as a person. Like he's so aggravating. But this is what I mean to say. He created a bubble, it's imploding on him and he has to make a decision what to do. He's going to double down and change his grift. Now, Rolo Tomasi, who is a red pillar and the godfather of the red pill, even Rolo Tomasi was asked about why the Tate brothers are moving away from the red pill. And he said, look, we're all grifting in some way. Everyone here is grifting in some way. And according to Rolo, he feels like the Tate brothers are making a good decision to 
to switch the grift to keep their brand going, but it is a switching of the grift, right? And so that's what I want us to pay attention to, that even people in the red pill admit as much as they like the Tates, that yeah, of course the Tates have to switch the narrative so they can go and do other things. So they're doubling down. They're appealing to conservatism. He mentioned Allah only once while mentioning the word God many times. And that is an appeal to the Christians because the Christians tend not to like Muslims. And then the Muslims and Christians fight about it. It's a whole thing. And so again, there is something to be said about his decision to do the grift, his decision to be anti-vax, his decision to call it the matrix, his decision to do all these things, right? Literally, he said he sold drugs here. Yeah, I'm a little confused. See how he's like lying mid-interview? Like that's the thing about Andrew Tate is like he's lying to you. He's lying to his customer base. He's lying to his fans. He's lying for money. Money, And again, like it is what it is. It, it, it is what it is. That's just who he is. He's Trump and he's that category of person. And it is what it is. People love Trump. People love Andrew Tate. And if you love those people um, in a way that – in a way outside of like just for fun and giggles, that's on you. You have that relationship with them. You do you. I don't need to stop you from doing it. I just think it says more about your character than you probably realize. And my head in Miller found it. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine. Yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind because I know I